ready, the fans are gathering, soon the lights will be on. And we are ready to fire up the mics and bring it all to you. It's game night in Central Texas, and it's all right here on KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. Westwood took a well-deserved bye last week. An aggressive season to this point. Some downtime was awesome for the Warriors. With some dings fixed and guys rested, the rest of the season fires up today. We welcome you to the reservation, the Kelly Reeves Athletic Complex for the Westwood Warriors Sports Network, powered by KMAX Sports and the Vibe Media Network presentation of Westwood Warrior football, along with Dr. Sankow twisting and tweaking the dial. Stephen Kabler back with us this weekend, or this week. Rodney Rodriguez, as we get going again, Westwood coming off a couple of back-to-back -back rough losses. You lose to the rivals, and that uh, that just as enhances it. But, Stephen, welcome back. A couple of tough ones there, but, you know, the season goes on. It's like a job. It just goes on. It does. It does. It's awesome to be back. Glad to be back in the booth and uh, back up here to watch these Warriors Take on a, a, a really good uh, Vandergriff team this week, but going back to the past few weeks, you know, you, you, you get through and you have a couple of tough losses right there. You have a chance to, uh, to pull one out against McNeil, but then you get what you really need right now, and that's the bye week. That's the time to just take a deep breath, take a step back, regather, regroup, understand what you're working with going forward, and then hit the, hit the second half of the season head on. And uh, it's a tough test coming in for the second half of this season with the undefeated Vipers coming in here to, to Kelly Reeves. But, you know, early kick, a little dark outside. Uh, you never know what can happen. It, and you hit the nail on the head. Early, early kick, 5 o'clock our kickoff time. One pole of lights, so some shortage. So, so there are four light poles here at Kelly Reeves. One of them is out, so that's the exaggerated start time here. And one game moved from here last night over to Dragon. So I'll tell you, just with the weather, and speaking of that, obviously our thoughts and prayers to everyone affected here by these river floods and the Lano River and, and just uh, now even creeping closer this way, you've got – uh, a, a lake at 140 percent full and it's uh it's a weird time <laughs> it's a weird time and uh hopefully all of that uh those affected by that uh will we'll get through that uh our game is always presented by the, by the westwood warrior football booster club their sponsors atx football fabulous affairs catering ferguson bath kitchen and lighting gallery flicks brew house jb goodwin real estate linda Bedour, nasal and sinus center of austin torchy's tacos whataburger over at 620 in lake creek we will have an interview with the fine folks from whataburger at the half jenny ray photography and ed ed lundry real estate so Stephen, as you said, 7-0, Vandy up at the top, Round Rock at 3-1, Cedar Ridge 3-1, Hendrickson is 3-2, Stony Points 2-2, McNeil 2-2, Westwood at 1-3, kind of on the outside looking in, but you said it, anybody can beat anybody in this district. Yeah, absolutely, anything can happen. It's one of those things where the whole state essentially has their eye on this Vandergrift Vipers team, and if they can come in here and, and play their hearts out and, and do everything they can and walk out with a win, the whole season flips around i mean yeah you know, it's it's the, the mindset of the team changes um the the work ethic the energy is back after a couple tough losses so you just got to come in here and, and play your game and, and really lean on that defense and um see see if you can get this win sure. because a win here would just be absolutely monumental to the season yeah got to you you play the game you play the game to win and we uh actually speaking of that we'll talk to coach wood here in just a second but in our uh 13 6 a last night mcneil over Leander, 55 to 20. That was the game over at Dragon. But speaking of that, uh, we will have a, an abbreviated chat with the Chief. Thanks to Anthony for actually taking the time. Is it, it's just been a, a madhouse to get this stuff uh, done today. But we will go to our chat with the Chief with Head Coach Anthony Wood. Westwood pregame show continues. Westwood getting ready to take on Vandegrift. Our pregame conversation with Head Coach Anthony Wood. What, well, Coach? I tell you, you get a bye week, and then here we are. Friday, early game. What a week! Oh yeah, what a way to start the week. You just, uh, we'll just kick off at 5 p.m. today. It'll be uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, uh, get, get kind of a different uh, atmosphere. You know, a lot of times when you make it uh, through to the playoffs, you'll play uh, early Saturday playoff games. And so um, uh, we've played at six, we've played at five, we've played at twelve, we've played at one. Oh, uh, so oh, uh, it, you just adjust just a tad bit and you move on. Yeah, I was telling I was telling the guys upstairs, it feels like a playoff atmosphere here with. 
but gloomy. I mean, uh, just everything's there. Uh, quickly going back a couple weeks ago, the McNeil game there, a couple of back-to-back -back ones there, tough ones, just a couple, couple of tough ones there. But uh, overall, your team, the fight in your team, very evident in, in that McNeil game. You know, absolutely. You know, we just had a couple of bad, uh, bad series in there that really cost us. But you know, all we do is ask our kids to give us a chance in the uh, in the fourth quarter, and we had a chance the last possession to win the football game, and unfortunately, it didn't turn out our way. Uh, but I, I really like to see the way we our team is fighting and, and uh, working hard. So um, hopefully, all that hard work this uh, this uh, summer and uh, uh, leading up to this year is going to pay off tonight. A little bit of that bye week in there come, kind of comes at a nice time, give you an opportunity to get some guys healed up, uh, maybe some dings, bumps and bruises, get some of that uh, ironed out in your in your off time. Well, you know that uh, you know you do use off off uh, the bye week to, uh, to try to recuperate and just kind of get um, get guys back healthy, and so uh, we were able to do that. We had uh, just shorter practices, worked on our fundamentals and techniques, and uh, got back to work this week on Vandegrift. So, uh, so we're pretty excited about our opportunity tonight. And talking about the Vipers, they come in, uh, they, they jump up. Here they are in in, in our district now. A, a nice addition, nice addition. You know, one way, not so nice addition the other way. Your thoughts on? Um, Coach uh, Coach Sanders and his bunch over there. That's a pretty good pretty good team across the way tonight. You know, absolutely. They they uh, they're doing a really good job over there. Uh, they are um, uh, they're well coached. They play hard. Really reminds me a lot of our. Uh, 2010, 11, 12, 13 uh, football teams that uh, that just played really hard, gave great effort, and uh, ran to the football well, and uh, and were just mean. You know, they played tough, they played physical, uh, and uh, you know, some people say they they've gotten lucky, but I don't believe in luck. I believe you you create uh, all the things that happen in a football game, and so uh, uh, they're creating a lot of uh, a lot of things, and uh, and they're doing a good job over there. It'll be fun, Coach. Uh, we'll let you off the clock early tonight uh, once this thing's done. we got we got to get done before dark, I guess. So that was the problem, right? It's a lighting issue here. It's one light pole. They, so instead of having four light poles, we only have three. Uh, so uh, we'll end the game with three light poles going and stuff like that. So there'll be one corner of the end zone that'll be a little darker than others. But you know what? They're going to have to play with it, too. So uh, you're not going to hear us complain. We're just going to get after it and go play. Absolutely. As always, best of uh, best wishes from us, Coach. Uh, go out there and let's get a W. All right. Thanks. Go Wood. Warrior football continues in just a moment. Has left the field. Go a little matinee football here, Stephen. I'll tell you, we got we got a whole evening to plan. Maybe by That's the time what, I mean, this is I'm done. I'm telling you, Rodney, I don't know what to do with myself <laughs> after this is going to be over. We're at we're up so early. But. Uh, I tell you, it's um, and and how odd is it? Uh, I know you, we're looking at that one strand of lights over there, and it uh, it don't work. It's it's <laughs> definitely out. Yeah, so. yeah. I'll tell you, crazy, crazy things, man. Uh, but but it's been a crazy week, as we said uh, around here, but. So the Warriors will get ready to go here on homecoming night, and um, they've got them good. Ho they've got those good home uniforms on. They got the white trousers, burnt orange jerseys, white numerals trimmed in burnt orange, the white helmets with the silver and burnt orange feathers, burnt orange W, and their last name across the back. Across the way, traveling Vandegrift Vipers, Coach Drew Sanders brings them in. They've got uh, white trousers, white jersey tops, black numerals with the Vandegrift across the front, and of course they've got the white helmets. So that's how they will take to the field tonight to get ready to go on homecoming and 
This right here, Stephen, a good you, you you alluded to it just a little bit earlier. I tell you, Westwood, you talked about it off the air. When you look at common opponents, yeah, you look at the records, but um, several things to factor in. There's attrition. There's injuries. There's 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 luck. I know Coach Wood says luck doesn't count, but it does. But in common opponents, eh, could could be a little bit of a different story. Right. I mean, they they've got uh, two two different common opponents so far this year in uh, Vista Ridge and that Round Rock team. And when you look at it, the Warriors take take down Vista Ridge twenty seven to seven, and then you look at your Vandegrift team, and Vandegrift beats them thirty six to seven. That's not really that big not, of a difference. Not a lot of a difference. You look at this Round Rock squad, and Vandegrift squeaks out a twenty seven twenty four win there. So. Their defense, uh, their offense only scores 27 points on that round rock defense. When you look at what Westwood was able to do, put up 42 against that round rock defense, although they did end up giving up 51 in the loss there. Right. But there are some things that you can look at between these two teams when it comes to common opponents uh, that really shows that there is a, a strong possibility that Westwood can get this win tonight. Also, coming off the bye week, you've got two weeks to really sit down, look at what this Vandergrift team does well, how you can attack it in the best way to beat it. And I think that's going to be the advantage for Westwood going into night. And what they're going to have to take advantage of is, did they use their two weeks the right way? Right. Did they go in and game plan correctly? And are they able to execute that game plan um, in order to get the job done? So we'll see. Um, usually, I, I always talk about it, Coach Wood, whenever he calls a timeout, after yeah. a timeout, he calls the right play. Let's see if he uses that extra week to call the right game plan here. And, and this is one where, where Coach Wood will throw the kitchen sink, right. the bathroom sink, the bar sink, the sink in the shop. He's going to throw every sink at him because a lot of people are saying, I kind of mentioned it there, Westwood on the outside looking in, but uh, they're still there. A lot of things need to happen, but you come and knock off the undefeated Vipers, you're setting yourself a pretty good tone. There's still plenty of football left to be played. There most certainly is a lot of football left to be played, and that's the one thing you never know. Teams can start hot and then all of a sudden fall off, or you can start slow and, and you can get hot. That's really uh, that's really what it's about, and, and you like to see your team grow as the year goes on. And uh, if the team can come out here and really, really play tough and play strong, and and show this Vandergrift team that they're not they're not going to get run over so easily, uh, and, and come out of here with a win, it would just be a, a giant confidence boost for this for this Warrior team. Indeed. 61 degrees from the reservation. Cloudy. Cool. Might have some drizzle. A little bit of everything. Perfect football weather. Tim Barney with the ball on the tee for Vandergriff. He's going to be kicking left to right as we get ready to go. Westwood back in action. Homecoming 2017. Matinee early, just after 5 o'clock. Hope you're listening on your ride in as we get ready. And we're underway. Deep kick. This one taken at the nine yard line, advancing to the 15, the 20 hit there at the 23, falling forward to the 24 is Nate Anderson. So you send Anderson back there, you get a good return, start at the 24 yard line, RJ Martinez brings him out, go down, score some points. Yeah, it's so easy, right? Simple yep. as that. And it's one of those things where you're gonna have to see a real big day out of Anderson, um, out of Anderson today. I think he's your big back. Obviously, you've got Mario Debs back there, but you really want to see if you can get Anderson running the power game, then you can throw Debs in there and let him get a little shifty action going. So we'll see if they start off start off uh, with uh, some passes or with some strong power runs here. From the 24 and a shift, now out of the Wildcat. Here's the snap. Anderson takes it right up the gut, advances past the 25 down to the 27. So a little bit of a trickery right there. First play, and they're quickly back. And here they go. They're moving quick. And uh, like you said, the kitchen sink getting thrown already. They're going right to left. Here is Martinez. Three-step drop looking underneath. Owsley in and out of the hands as he was trying to haul that one in at the 27. Maybe just a little bit short. Tavon not able to pull it in. Yeah, just uh, let him just a little bit too much. I think Anderson was coming. Coming out to get the seal block on the outside. Just kind of maybe got in Tavon's way a little bit there. Uh, but good play design, just not quite executed to the uh, to the level that you'd like to see because uh, he might have gotten 20, 25 yards out of that play. Single receiver to the near side, Owsley. Two to the far side. In the right slot is Cox. Anderson in the backfield. Here is Martinez. Rolling right, looking downfield. Plants now shifts directions. Going back the other way. Running backwards. Dumps this one off. Complete at the 26. Turning up field. Nate Anderson. He's hit and driven out of bounds. Probably going to be a yard shy of the first down as he runs into J.J. Parker. They're moving the They're chains. moving the chains. He, he, he lowered his shoulder and got right where he needed to go. And again, 
Week after week, game after game, Martinez scrambling and making something happen. Great job making the play happen. You said it. Ball on the right side, hash mark, first and ten. Here's Martinez, three-step drop. Look in this one. Owsley completed the 35, gets forward to the 37 for a gain of a couple. They actually give him the 38, so a gain of three yards. So Martinez, boy, this offense moving fast. And that's what they want to do. They want to, they want to come off the ball quickly and then gas this Vandergriff defense. Three to the near side, empty set to the short side. Here is the give as Debs takes a handoff, bounces to the 40 all the way down to the 42-yard line. So Mario Debs, his first action, and he picks up about five yards. We got a, a really big third down here. You want to try and move these chains so you can keep this drive alive. Third down and four from the 30, so the 41, actually, it is. Here's the give. Debs, all kinds of room, but the hole closes up. They're going to give him the 39. They keep moving him. They get him to the 45, 44, gets to the 45 first down. Yeah, that is just a, that's just all want to right there out Indeed. of Debs. Yeah. He, uh, he takes the pile with him and gets that extra yard that he needs and just keeps those legs churning. There's that power run game that they need. Ball on the right side, hash mark, line of scrimmage is the 45, just underway, 10-21 to go here in the first quarter. Trips to the near side, two to the far side, empty backfield for Martinez. Plants, turns, complete, Owsley at the 49, he's hit and dropped there. So Tavon Owsley on a little in pattern is able to pick up four yards. I do like their, their positive yards on first down. Hey, it's what you got to do every single time right there. And Tavon did a real nice job. Instead of just trying to take off, he juggled that ball a little bit, made sure he caught it and got the yards that he could get instead of dropping the ball, trying to get more. Just shy of the midfield stripe. Trips to the near side. Now standing out of the pistol, there is Anderson standing behind Martinez. He takes the give. And he's met at the line of scrimmage. Sniffed that one out nicely by Vandergrift. Is scraping through the line of scrimmage, 58, Joseph Hawk. And they may have lost a yard on that. Yeah, they read that one like a book, and it was just one of those things that uh, Martinez, maybe, if that's, a, if, that's, if that's a read play, needs to pull that ball and throw that screen out there because that screen was pretty open. But uh, good play by the Vandergrift defense. Now it's a third long here. Got to get the conversion. Cox checks back in. He lines up on the left side as a blocking tight end. Two receivers here to the near side, one to the short side. Martinez rolling left, looking downfield. He's going to tuck it and run. Breaks a tackle. Advances past the 45, down to the 44. That's a first down. Gain of nine yards. He needed eight. And that's the one thing you've got to keep doing is you've got to roll him out. And whenever he's so smart that he knows when to run and when not to run. Obviously saw that he had the lane there. Put a great move there at the end to get the extra two yards that he needed for the first down. Keep those chains moving. Keep this drive alive. You and Jing line up to the far side. In the backfield's Debs. Cox lines up. Here's Owsley to the near side. First and 10 from the Vandy 44. On the give, Debs running straight forward and runs into a pile of Vipers led by 21. Jax McCauley, but he picks up a yard when it looked like there was nothing. And you'll take you'll take one over zero all day, uh, but so far right now this Vandegrift defensive front is getting a push on these run plays. But our but the the Westwood offensive line is holding up nicely on our on the pass plays, and so you really just want to see the O line start to get the push on these inside inside uh, trap plays. Here's second down and nine play from the 43 out of the gun. Martinez stands standing now in motion here to the near side is Mario Debs. R J four step drop looking plants flushed out of the pocket. He will be dropped. Blitzing through, there was no stopping Varun Kalaparam. Yeah. I think he was untouched. Yeah, that, that's one of those that uh, RJ just holds onto the ball a little bit too long. He's got he's to have that feel in the pocket that, that that sensor needs to go off when he realizes that pressure's coming. He's just got to get rid of the ball. Uh, he, try, he tried to do his patented outside, inside spin move to get away from it, but um, just, just wasn't going to happen. Varun had him all wrapped up. All the way back to the Warrior 42, and that sets up what was a really nice drive here. Now setting up a third down and 24. So you got to get creative right here. Three receivers to the far side, single receiver to the near side. In the backfield is Debs. He stands to the left of Martinez. Three-man front coming here from Vandy. Here is RJ looking, plants, cutting across. That one picked off at the 47-yard line, stepping in front of that one, maybe an ill-advised pass. That was Ryan Arnold, and Vandy gets the first turnover of the game. Yeah, and I just don't think Oliver U was ready for that ball, and RJ puts a lot of heat on it. Um, there were two inside crossing patterns there, maybe some miscommunication from the wideouts, uh, but he tries to feed it into Oliver U there on the backside, and it just bounces off his hands right into the lap of that Vandergrift defender. And um, an unfortunate turn of events right there in two plays. You got a good drive going, then all of a sudden, your opponent's got the ball and you're half of the field. 
They do. They start from the 47. First and 10, they go left to right, standing out of the shotgun, waiting. First down play, that was 7.15 to go here in the first quarter. Running the jet sweep, penalty marker on the play. They blew it dead. You said it, my man. A little false start there against Vandy. A little anxious as quarterback Drew Dawson calls the signals there. Yeah, well, I mean, this, this defensive front's no joke. We've seen it all year. They've been able to get pressure on the quarterback. And uh, you could tell that that's obviously something that's Vandergrift offensive line has been, been looking at on film because uh, it was more than just one guy jumping over there. Lo they look a little antsy, and uh, let's see if this defensive front can, uh, can get to them a little bit. Back over to the Vandy 48, ball on the left side hash mark. Smallwood in the backfield. And the complete pass, a little swing pass on the outside, nicely defended by Westwood. As hauling that in, in on the stop for Westwood, 23 to Barry. Completion there to Merrifield. Yeah, Mer Merrifield's going to be the guy to watch out for. He's there. He's one of their go-to go -to receivers with three touchdown grabs this season. Here's Dawson. Play action fake. Looking pass. Downfield one-on-one. -on -one. You called it. What a grab. That right there is highlight stuff from Ryan Merrifield. That is unbelievable. That's Odell beckham esque right there, guys. I can't believe that. I do think that he pushed off the defender saw, there a little bit. I saw a little push off. Yeah, yep. I, saw, I definitely saw a push off, but nevertheless, what a great grab. And just Falling to the ground, he hauls that in. From the eight-yard line, first and ten on the play action, Dawson tucks, lowers his shoulder, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Vandy. Woo, man. And that's just a, that's just a uh, zone read play right there, set up, set up by the big bomb down the field. Um, you know, inside play action. Right there at the end, Dawson pulls the ball out, sees that he's got a lane because the, uh, the the D end and the linebackers bite down on the running back there, and he just essentially walks in the end zone. Yes, he does, and Vandy draws first blood about midway here through the first quarter. On for the extra point is Barney. Good snap, kick is up, and good. Jeez. That was fast. What a grab! That that one's going to be that was going to be a lot of highlight tapes right there. Uh, yeah, and that, that's one of those things where just in the matter of four plays, the whole mindset of this team changes. When you've got it, you start your own 24-yard line, you march it down to their, you know, 42, and then all of a sudden you take a big sack, followed by the turnover, followed by a just an unbelievable catch. I mean that that's just one of those things where you got to hand it to the kid. You know, it's, mm -hmm. that's, that's that's a play that. Nine times out of ten, isn't going to get made. So yeah. it's it's one of those that you just kind of got to shake your head and say, "Wow, that's a great play," and and move on to the next one. Six thirty-two to go in the quarter. Your new score: Vandy seven, Westwood nothing. ATX football, the Austin Youth Football League. That is a youth football league right here in Northwest Austin. You can find more information about them on Facebook at ATX Youth Football. They teach safe football, competitive football. I mean, if you're going to play football, it's going to be competitive but they teach it the safe way with your young football players' safety in mind. That is ATX Football, the Austin Youth Football League. So Westwood teases them there on that first drive. Looked like the offense had something going, but Vandy goes down the field. Here's Char Charles Fournier will kick it off. And standing back for Westwood, Julian DeBerry along with Nate Anderson. Standing back at the five. Early football action on a Friday. This one kicked short, and it goes out of bounds at the 42. There's your flag. This is going to be pretty good field position here for this Westwood offense. Yeah, Vandergrift trying to get a little tricky there. They, they, they saw what was going on with the Westwood offense, that they are going to be able to move the ball, and they said, yeah, why don't we get this quick score and then try and get the ball back and go uh, – stretch this to a 14-point uh, lead, but just a miscue by the kicker there doesn't even give his team a chance at it. It, it doesn't even hit the ground until it's out of bounds about four yards. So uh, good starting field position here for the Warriors, and uh, let's see if they can continue that, uh, that little bit of momentum that they had early on in that first drive and try and get, try and get an, uh, a quick answer here uh, for the boys in orange. Yeah, no doubt. A great opportunity here for this offense as they make their way back out. The line of scrimmage is their own 47. 6.32 to go in the first quarter. Ball on the right side, hash mark, trips to the near side. Two receivers to the far side, empty backfield for Martinez. Brings a motion man, that is Debs. They now stand out of the pistol. Here is Martinez on the give. Debs hit at the line of scrimmage and just swallowed up there. And he's just running, he's just looking, 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 and nothing opens up as far as a hole goes. So. 
He just keeps running to the backside of his line, hoping they may get a little push to open something up, but nothing doing there for Debs. Yeah, Hawk stands him up, and then the Vipers, they just swarm. Loses a yard, second down and 11 now from the 46. Here's Martinez on the give, trying the run. Finds a little bit of running room, trying to work towards midfield. They're going to spot him at the 48. Is Mario Debs. He's shoved to the ground there at the end of it by Sage Farmer. No flag. No flag. That's a little, uh, it's maybe a little bit of a question mark there. The whistle had blown by about two and a half, three seconds whenever he got thrown to the ground. So he picks up three, make it four, third down and eight from the 49 yard line. Here's Martinez. Two to the near side, one to the far side. Debs is the running back. Here's RJ. Drops, looking, pressure coming, flushed out of the pocket, steps up, runs at midfield. He's hit at the 46, gets to the 45. But he's going to be about three yards shy of the first down over on the Vandegrift side as the Vipers defense. Boy, their pursuit is pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're a bunch of speedy uh, speedsters out there. And what they did there to, to – they put a spy on R.J. Martinez. Oh, it looks like we're going to go for it here, yeah. Rodney. I'll let you take this one back. Jason Garrett would punt from here, but not Anthony Wood. <laughs> Fourth and three from the 46. Here's Martinez on the draw trying to get to the stick is Debs, and he's not able to do it. I like the play call. They were thinking something over here on the long side of the field, but this defense, again, their pursuit is just too good. It's very, very fast. And what I was saying on the previous play before we went back to the, for the fourth down try uh, was that previous play when RJ took off from the pocket, they had put a linebacker in spy to where if he takes off, that's the, the, the linebacker's sole purpose is to make sure he doesn't get more than three yards in a quarterback sneak or a scramble play like that, and, and he was successful. So... Um, Going to really need the defense here to stand up, turn the ball over on downs. Indeed. First and 10 from their own 47. Here's Vandy. Three backs in the backfield. A swing pass complete at the 45. Turning upfield at midfield. Gets away from Hoover into Westwood territory down to the 48-yard line on the completion. Trey Mongozi. That's another name we'll say a bunch. Yeah, it's another name. And uh, we talked about Merrifield earlier. Mongozi just as good. Four touchdown grabs on the season. 338 yards receiving on 28 catches or 27 catches. Excuse me. So uh, they're they're two big wideouts. You're going to definitely have to try and keep in check today. Gain of six. Second down and four from the 47 on the Westwood side. Here's Dawson. Fake. Complete. Mongozi at the 45. Penalty marker on the field right around the 48. Might have a blocking foul back in there, but Mongozi does pick up the first down as he gets to the 37. This may actually be against Westwood, but a nice little hook pattern there is Trey Mongozi. I'm not really sure what they what they would be calling here. Referee Wayne Elliott. False start against Vandy. Boy, that, that flag came in a little late for that call. Yeah, it did. And it's one of those where they, um, um, I think it was one of their receivers was lined up um, not on the line or off the line like he was supposed to. Yeah. He didn't check with the ref there before lining up. So a um, little bit of a break there for the, for the Westwood defense. Now, you know, you've got a second and long here. You can try and see more than likely going to be a run play because we haven't seen a whole lot out, out of their, uh, out of Vandy's star running back Smallwood so we'll see we'll see if they start to run to him second and nine play action fake to Smallwood here's Dawson looking flushed out of the pocket gets away from Ethan Brown here's Clitheroe trying to close in Damon Harris from the backside lays him out at the 49 what a play by big number eight yeah we were talking about the pursuit of Vandergriff but don't ever sleep on Damon Harris man his pursuit is top notch um, of any team in this in the state of Texas I would say man he, he coming off the backside Gets a great spin move through the line and then just sees uh, sees Drew Drew Dawson take off and just follows him for about 25 yards before he gets the tackle. Two receivers each side from the 49. Here's Dawson looking flushed out of the pocket. Gets away, but he will be short of the first down. Again, great pursuit. Ethan Brown comes in to finish off along with Damon Harris once again. Oh, you had a bunch of Warriors converging all in there, and they all collided at the end of that play. He, Irvin Flores. And it's fourth down coming up, fourth and three. So here's uh, here's gut check time um, for yeah, Coach no. Sanders. It looks like they're keeping they're keeping the offense out there to go for it. Uh, but let's see if this is a this is a big play here. See if Westwood can can stand up and get this ball back from the Westwood 46. Two receivers to the far side, ball right in the middle of the field. Motion man coming That's across, sweet. Mongozi. They fake Smallwood cutting across, incomplete as he was looking for number 11, Merrifield. And the Westwood defense holds. 
and um, that's just that's just a flat out drop from eleven yep. Maryfield there, and that's a, that's a drop you'll take all day long. Yep, and uh, get the ball back right about where you started uh, after the yeah. kickoff earlier. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and click the reset button and uh, see if we can. See if we can get uh, a tying score here. This is a uh, game's moving pretty it's quick moving here, Rodney. Very fast, and we've had so many of these where it's like first quarter just flies, and then the second quarter comes to a, a screeching halt. You know, you hit the handbrake. Don't jinx us. <laughs> yeah, really. We're, we're all excited. It's five o'clock for crying out loud. Alan Jackson said something about that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Empty backfield. Five receivers. Here's Martinez. Complete. Lyndon Jones. Boy, and he's bottled up quickly. Going to lose a couple of yards there. As Jones is wrapped up by J.J. Parker. Great arm strength from Jones there. All they, they weren't even trying to tackle him. They're just trying to rip the ball out. And uh, he just held on to that ball and, and made sure he didn't, he didn't fumble it because a fumble here would be catastrophic. Ooh, you got that right. Two-yard loss. So on the field, Lyndon Jones, Ian Cox to the near side. On the far side, Robbie Jing along with Oliver Yu. In the backfield is Nate Anderson with R.J. Martinez. Operating from their own 44. Here's Westwood. 1.30 to go in the first quarter. 7 to nothing. Vandy leads. Here's Martinez. Five-step drop. He's got some time. Flushed out. He's going to run. Turns up field at the 45. Gets to midfield. Goes out of bounds at the 49. Penalty marker way back in the backfield. Had a pretty good idea what this one will be. Yeah, usually. Somebody grabs a hold of something right there at the end to spring him free. And, and that'll was, take that was, away a nice run. Yeah, it was ever so close because he was just almost past past the point where the ref isn't going to call that play anymore, and he isn't going to call that penalty anymore. And just just gets it right there at the end. And again, you know, you're just setting yourself up behind the chains, and it's second down and 22. It's it's tough to come back from that. Yeah, from the 34. No Whataburger scoreboard for a while. We probably won't open that until about the, I don't know, fourth quarter. <laughs> fourth quarter or so. Nobody else kicking off this early. Yeah, nobody. Everybody's stuck in traffic trying to get there. Five wide receivers here on the second down at 22 play for R.J. Martinez. Trips to the far side, single or two to the near side. Motion man across on the jet sweep is Anderson trying to turn up field, but the pursuit's there once again. Great open field tackle. Cuts the legs out. Ryan Arnold drops a Anderson for a loss. And I'm just looking at this Vandergriff. These linebackers are have the speed of DBs and the strength of the O-line. It's, it's crazy to watch. Uh, they just had two linebackers just sit there and, and one spine Anderson, one spine Martinez, and then the, both of them go with Anderson and give him essentially nowhere to run. Yeah, three yard loss back to the 31. So it's going to bring up third down and 25. He's got the arm. Third and Brushy Creek right here. 33 seconds to go in the quarter and the play clock was running way down they don't get the play off and it's going to be five more yards Whew, man this is going bad to worse you're at 25 you're going to be third and 30 very very quickly and that's mm. one of those that rj's got to got to be able to see and look at that play clock and realize that it's running down and, and either call a timeout or well in that situation call a timeout because you're you're third and 25 so <laughs> Yeah, so third and 30. You got a tall order right here. Ball on the right side, hash mark. They're going right to left here in the first for 24 more seconds. Anderson in the backfield. Two receivers to the long side. Here's Martinez. Screen to the far side, hauled in at the 21. Turns up field, gets to the 33. Is Anderson. They'll give him that. And Vandy shuts him down there. Fourth down and long coming up here when we get ready to fire up for the second quarter as the final seconds click off of the clock. Man, quick happening first quarter here on an abbreviated early version. Hey, the traffic stopped out on Palmer Lane for crying out loud. We're playing football so early. One complete from the reservation. Your score, Vandegrift 7, Westwood nothing. Warrior football continues in a moment. Bright Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, B Y P E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. From West Texas all the way to the bio and all points in between. I saw miles and miles of Texas. All this is the KMAC Sports Network, bringing your teams to you. 
FabulousAffairsCatering.com. Exquisite food, expert coordination, and gracious service is what the company offers. Proud to be a part of the Westwood family, a corporate sponsor. They've been doing it for 22 years. Whatever your catering needs, Fabulous Affairs will help you. FabulousAffairsCatering.com. Fourth and 23 as we welcome you back to the reservation. The Palace on Palmer Lane and Robbie Jing makes his way out to get ready to punt it away on a fourth down and 23 here for the Warriors. Good snap, pressure coming. Here's Jing gets the foot into it. Fair catch called for and made at the 38 over on the other side. Gets himself a 22-yard kick when it's all said and done. 42-yard yeah. kick, pardon me. One of those you'd like to see maybe get a little more hang time on it to put it over the head of the return man, but you'll you'll take the fair catch there all day because you don't want you don't want any of these guys making big big play returns or anything like that. You're you're only down seven. You get a little bit of a flip the field here. Now you just gotta let your defense uh, stand up again. First and ten, they're gonna go right to left. Here's Smallwood as they line up a direct snap. Two receivers to the near side. A blocking back in, oh, pardon me, no, now from under center. How about that? Dawson on the pitch is Smallwood trying to turn up field. He does it the 40 great pursuit. Well, we're using that word a lot. Well, Will Clitheroe. Yeah, that's just one of those where you, you string the play out, you string the play out. Like I say all the time, use that sideline as a 12th defender and and uh, not, not allow him to get the edge there, and they didn't. Drew Sanders, all different formations here. Two to the near side, empty set over on the far side. Mongozi in motion, gives to Smallwood out of the backfield. He's hit at the line of scrimmage and forward for three yards. So Ochoa in on the stop, along with Shoup. So you got him in a third down play coming up, the 46. Third and uh, not necessarily short, but not necessarily long. It's one of those in between third, three, third and four, five-ish plays. So. Uh, Really, do you, it's kind of a question, do you want your, your defensive line to pin its ears back and blitz? Do you think it's going to be a pass? And, and there's, there's so many different things to go on here, so it's one of those where uh, just kind of play your defense and, and get the stop. Three backs in the backfield, now two. Merrifield to the near side. Here is the give, trying to turn up via Will Clitheroe. Great job by Will Clitheroe to drop Bowen Lewis for a loss, five-yard loss. Westwood defense holds. Oh, yeah. Clitheroe just smells that one out all the way. He's shuffling across the line, shuffling across the line, and he sees the hole open up, and he, boom, shoots right through it. And then, of course, make sure you can shoot through that line, but if you don't make the tackle, it doesn't matter. He, he made the tackle, and an absolutely great stop by the Westwood defense here. Luke Jasinski to kick it away on fourth down and eight. Ball at the 41. After a great stand by the Westwood defense, able to get this one off Jasinski. Jing is back there, takes a bounce at the 35. It'll take a Vandy roll and falls dead at the 30. First down for the Westwood offense right there. And I'll tell you, Stephen, this, this game for Westwood with this defense, this defense is playing the way they did the first half of the season. This defense has to be extremely happy with, with the way they played. You give up seven points only because of maybe a questionable push off, but a, fin, a phenomenal catch by uh, Merrifield there down down towards yeah. the goal line. So, yeah. I mean, you give up one play that leads to seven points. Other than that, you've given up essentially nothing. Yeah, that's right. Your your offense, and, and it just feels like they need to make a play. Just one. Just make a play. Center is set up, and here's a little razzle-dazzle. First and 10 going left to right. Out of the gun, Martinez. Four-man front from Vandy on the give. Nothing doing. Oh, I'll yeah, tell you this. I don't. I don't. I think there may have been a little miscommunication there because there didn't seem like any of the O line was blocking at yeah, all. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph Clark was in the backfield about the time that Debs got the ball. Loss of three. Second down and 13 with 10 minutes to go here in the half. Line of scrimmage is at 27 for Westwood. They trail seven to nothing. Just a couple of first downs here, one after the other. Run some clock and really get this drive alive would be. Uh, would be really nice. Two receivers to the near side and the right side slot is Ian Cox. Out of the gun, here's Martinez rolling right, looking downfield. Great block from Cox. This one almost intercepted as he was trying to hit his man, Jing. But I'll tell you, this is just sniffing out the football, this Vandy defense. Yeah, that, that closing speed there, and that was uh, Tyler Mo Mongo Mongozi. Yeah. Mongozi, the, uh, the receiver there. So you know he's got speedy he plays receiver. Also putting him back there at the safety position and his closing speed there to break up that pass uh, was, was scary. Yeah. yeah. 
He looked uh, like a viper. <laughs> well, that, that, yeah. that, you know. Third and 13, trips to the near side. Single receiver to the far side is Owsley. Play clock at six. Need to hurry up here, RJ, out of the gun. Martinez, three-step drop looking. He's got some time. He's flushed out. Gets a block. Running at the 29. Driven out of bounds about the 33-yard line is where they'll spot him at the 34. So it's going to bring up fourth down, fourth and short. Well, shorter than fourth and 30. <laughs> right. Fourth and, fourth and 30 is uh, tough. But so that's be again, fourth and seven. That's again one of those things where they're just keeping a spy there on RJ and Number letting 10. him run and trusting their their linebacker or their uh, or their safety to, to to be able to come up and make a play and force him to not get extra yardage. Officially fourth and six from the 34, and now Drew Nelson drops back, stands at the 35. Here is Robbie Jing. Boy, he's riding this one out. <laughs> Finally gets it off. Gets a booming kick. Drives Nelson all the way back to the 25. I thought Robbie Jing was going to take off. I did too. He, it looked like he wanted to, uh, but I don't necessarily think he would have had the field to get the yardage. I think it was a good good call to put the ball away there. Gets a good one away. He does. And is uh, able to, to reflip this field. And uh, this may be the worst starting field position for the Vipers today. Yeah, pushes him all the way back. He really did a great job of getting that kickoff. Boy, it did. It took off. Line of scrimmage is the 26. And here's the Vandy offense back out. Nicely well-balanced game. One big play, the difference at this point. They're going with an actual huddle here. I don't think I've seen one of those in <laughs> forever. Here's Dawson. Smallwood in the backfield. Going right to left. Single receiver to the near side. Two receivers to the far side. Going to give it to Isaiah Smallwood. Hit at the line of scrimmage and manages to fall forward for a couple of yards. The ball pops out at the end. Westwood with that football. I think they're going to call it down. Yeah. Huh, Cam Colvin looked like he laid the hit there that jarred that ball loose. That would have been nice to have there. Oh, it would have. Spot him at the 27. So a gain of a yard to bring up second down and nine here for Vandy. Here's Drew Nelson back out. Two receivers to the far side, single receiver to the near side. That's Merrifield. Single back in the backfield for Nelson. Motion man across from left to right. Play clock at four. Here's the turn, the give, running, hit. Nice Westwood defensive play once again. This time it's Vicente Ochoa that goes one-on-one -on -one with the running back there. And what's real nice is we're seeing this defensive line get a really good push that's allowing these, allowing space for these linebackers to come up and, and just disrupt any any play that, that the Vipers are trying to run right here. And again, now we get a third down and long. Now is whenever you get to pin your ears back and really try and put pressure on this quarterback. Bennett in the backfield there with Dawson. Here's Dawson looking. Breaks a tackle. Here he is at the 35. He's going to fall forward, pick up a first down. He gets to the 37, needed the 36. Nice drive, a job by Drew Dawson and to find a way to get that yard. Yeah, they're going quick. Dawson out of the gun. Single back in the backfield. Swing pass complete. This is Mongozi at the 37, driven out of bounds at the 40. Oh, as once don't again, do that. it's Zach Hoover. Oh, There's there the penalty comes. marker. Yep. You, you heard the whistle there. Can't slam him down after. Hoover made the play, but it was after the play where all the action happened. And we'll wait on the call. Think we know what it is. Actually, the men in orange are clapping. Ooh, they're going to pick it up. No foul. That's, uh, that's a Ooh. break right there. That is a break right there. That one could have been a backbreaker right there. Oh, yeah. So instead, second down and six from the 40. It did look a little late. I don't know how much Ginobili was involved there. No, uh, we don't know, but uh, <laughs> we'll take we'll take uh, we'll take a pick up there. Maybe that was uh, they knew that they missed one with Debs earlier, so they were they were giving it back. Possibly, possibly, or maybe that push off. Second uh, and six. Or the push off. Motion man across, two to the far side, one here to the short side. Single back in the backfield. Motion man across Nelson. On the jet sweep, trying to turn up fields Nelson. He's hit at the 40, gets to the 42. Another good play by Westwood. I'm saying this, I'm very impressed with the way this defense is playing so far. They're fast, they're physical, and they look up for the challenge right now. You can tell that um, 
They had they had been taking a, a couple of beatings here and there the past couple of games, and they came out and they they got they got ready to go during the bye week because they look ready to go here. Smallwood out of the game. Brendan Bennett checks in in the backfield. Two receivers to the far side, two receivers to the near side. He's got Smallwood and Merrifield both lined up here to the near side. Ball on the right side, hash mark. Motion man across. Here's a quick pump fake. Out of the pocket is Dawson. He's got the first down all the way down to the 46. I'll tell you, when this guy gets loose, he's just very evasive. Yeah, he can, he can definitely run the ball. He's got good vision. It's one of those where you got to start thinking, do we put our own spy on Dawson? Yeah, Dawson, 265 yards this year. Long pass over on the far side, one-on-one -on -one coverage. That one swatted away, almost intercepted. Almost. Demetrius Jones back there on great coverage as he's one-on-one -on -one with Timmy Hanna. Yeah, fantastic coverage there from Jones. And uh, we've seen it from him all season. Whenever he's really playing up to the level he can play up to, it's hard to get completions in on him. Brings up second down and 10 from the Westwood 45. 6.53 to go in the half. Again, our halftime show coming up. Got our friends from Whataburger due in for an interview, along with the Westwood Warrior Band, Sundancers. Homecoming festivities. Starting to look a little rainy, looking foggy. Timeout called by Vandy. This has been a really nice job. We, the, the Round Rock game, Vandy really, obviously you mentioned it earlier, Stephen, down to the wire was Vandy, but I'll tell you, Westwood, Westwood's going toe to toe with them right here this evening. Yeah, it looks it looks it looks like it's um, going to be a defensive battle here. I mean, first drive of the game, Westwood starts moving the ball, then they kind of uh, get a get a penalty there and, and end up in throwing the interception. But they had some success. Um, but so far, it's been the defensive defenses here that have really stepped up and showed that it's going to take things like big plays, like the big one-handed catch we saw down here. That's what it's going to take to win this game. And uh, so far, the advantage is to Vandergrift 1-0 on the big plays, but long way to go. And we know that this Westwood offense is very capable sure. of making the big play. You betcha. As we said, we started at 5-1, light pole, out of commission. A little bit of an electrical issue, so we're playing with three light poles. And, of course, it's overcast. It's starting to sprinkle. A little bit of fog, maybe starting to roll in. So, I'll tell you, the stage is set. Second and 10 from the 45. Here's a give. Smallwood tripped up. Nice play by Eric Hawkins. Well, oh, Hawk just reached out and grabbed his shoelace, it looked like. Yeah, well, any way you can to get him down. What, I, what I'm saying here is that uh, they're not really running Smallwood all that much. He's really been their workhorse. I mean, 148 carries coming into this game on the season. And I think that may be his second actual just straight-up handoff in the backfield. Um, just a, really a testament to this Westwood defensive line. Third down and eight. Mongozi in motion from right to left. Out of the gun. Here's Dawson waiting on the snap. Drops at midfield. Pass complete at the 38. Turning upfield is Mongozi. He picks up the first down, gets an extra yard down to the 34. Oh, pardon me, that was not Mongozi. That time it was Bo Dawson. That's a freshman playing out there. Dawson the brother, Dawson. the Dawson to Dawson. That's right. First and 10 from the 34. Here's a give. There's Smallwood as he runs right. And runs head on into number 40, Jaleel Davis. Nice job by Davis. Maybe if he'd have squared up and hit him a little lower. Yeah, he, he, but he could have easily gotten run over there. But he Absolutely. stood him up and, uh, and, and stopped the, the, the big gain. Three-yard gain, second down and seven. Swing pass, Mongozi hauls it in at the 29. Turns, runs to the 25, make it the 23. That'll be a Vandy first down as the Vipers now moving down the field as the Rain looks like it's picking up just a tad bit more. And this is just one of those, they're throwing short screen plays, getting their, their playmakers into open field, and, and we're just not making the right tackles. Here's Dawson on the give. Smallwood running left and gets to the 20. He's dropped there by Davis. That's a touchdown saving tackle yeah. right there by Davis. Yeah, keeps it to a two-yard gain. Second down and seven. They give him three. Here's Dawson out of the gun. Smallwood in the backfield. Two receivers to the far side. Single receiver to the near side. Dawson swallowed up. Damon Harris in his pocket. Oh, yeah. As soon as that ball was snapped, and it seemed like Damon, Har Damon Harris was in the backfield. It looked like Dawson might hand him the ball. Yeah, right? Harris didn't bite at all in the play action. It was going all in on Dawson, and it paid off. Big sack there. That's the kind of stuff you need from your defense. Third and long set up here for the Vipers. 
Nice play by Harris once again. That is one of your defensive stalwarts right here. Not only tonight, all season. Big number eight. Woo. Damon. Demand. Demand. Demand Harris. Absolutely. From the 26-yard line, here is Dawson out of the shotgun. Single back in the backfield, Smallwood. Three-step drop. Looking. Dawson flushed out. Bo Brown in, produ er, in production, in pursuit. And he tosses it out of bounds. Hey, Ethan a, Brown. What am I thinking a, about? I'm about four years behind here. That's a big stand by the defense here. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they're going to kick the, uh, to elect to go for the field goal or they're going to try and pick up the first down here. But it looks like uh, number four, Drew Dawson, is still on the field. Yeah, getting, getting a little, well, you won't say muddy, not on this field, but getting a little slippery. Fourth and 14 from the 26. 426 to go here in the half. Trips to the near side. A little bit of movement across the Westwood front. Here's Dawson looking back over to the sideline. Play clock at 9 as it continues to wind down. Dawson is either going to ride this down or they won't snap it. Here's Dawson. Drops back looking. He's out of the pocket running. Brown in pursuit. He will be dropped at the 15-yard line. Great open field tackle by Hoover. And the ball will go over on down. Second time, Stephen, this defense defense came here to play. The defense has come to play, and that's one of those where it's third and so long that you're like, okay, fine, we're going to play this, this zone coverage. We're not going to let you get the deep ball, uh, but we'll let your quarterback take off because he, we, he's not going to get 18, 19 yards off. So he may get 13, mm -hmm. but he's going to need 19. He's not going to get it, and that's what the defense did right there. And uh, now we just got to see a little bit of production out of here in the offense, and we're going to start to see that defense start to tire out again. 4.15 to go here in the half. In a seven-point ball game, Martinez drops, looking, all kinds of pressure coming. He just dumps this one off. Anderson was over there, but he had three big old Vipers right in his grill. Yeah, they were looking for the screen play there in uh, number six. We've said his name a bunch. Mongozi out, just sniffed it out and uh, was there to play spy on, on Nate Anderson and take away the screen play. Just making our RJ throw it away. Owsley here to the near side. Hegde and Jing over to the far side. Anderson stands in the backfield. Ball on the right side. Hash mark here for a second down and 10 play from the 16-yard line for Martinez. He now brings Owsley in motion across from left to right. RJ rolling left, looking downfield. Pass complete at the 25. Trying to turn up field is Mohan Hegde. That'll be a first down. Great 11-yard gain for Mohan Hegde. And that's one of those that you love to see. That's the, that's the rollout that RJ loves so much. He throws it right there into the perfect spot for Hegde to catch. Hegde uh, was almost tackled before the first down, but does a little shimmy shake to get the extra two yards that he needs. First down, keep those chains and moving. Ball at the 27. Now on the left side, hash mark. Alzi to the far side. Hegde here to the near side with Robbie Jing. In the backfield is Anderson. Nice job by the Hamburgers up front. There's been a couple of times where there have been losses. But these guys are doing a darn good job on that line of scrimmage. <laughs> here is a give. Anderson a little bit of a delay. Nate, boy, I tell you, just one tackle away just, right there. Just so, just so close to uh, breaking it there. And if he breaks that tackle, he goes for 15, 20 yards easily. Maybe makes a couple more minutes. Yeah. And, and we have our first big play of the game. But, you know, positive yards, positive yard. Hey, yeah. Um, but you're going to need to start getting more than that with the uh, clock running just about inside three minutes here. Uh, you got a long way to go before you, before you score. Second down and nine from their own 28-yard line here for the Warriors. Three timeouts for Westwood, two timeouts for Vandy. Trips to the near side. This play clock is at seven. Here's Martinez. Play clock at three. At one, takes a snap, gives it to Anderson, trying to get away from the initial contact, cannot do it. Spencer Jones in the backfield drops him. And I think we're gonna we're gonna have to start seeing some more play action, um, short crossing patterns out of this team. The middle of the field looks wide open right now. The Vipers are just bringing um, three, four, five men sometimes uh, on their rush, and uh, it's really just eating up the running game here of Westwood. That Oliver U special would work really oh, good. Oh, that yeah, that that eighty yard Oliver U special yeah. would be real nice. Sounds like a, a a platter at Luby's or something. The Oliver U special. Yeah, give me that one. <laughs> third and thirteen trips to the near side. One back in the backfield on a third down and thirteen play from their own twenty four. Here's Martinez. Pressure coming from the backside. Throws it right down the middle. He's got Hegde. Hauls it in at the There's forty. The big play. Mohan Hegde slips the coverage just as you called Coach Kabler, and that's a big first down for Westwood. Oh, man, and just the perfect, absolute perfect ball out of R.J. Martinez. Hit him in stride. Oh, absolutely. It's one of those where 
I mean, Hagdy's just running. He says, oh, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Big play. Um, just what you needed. Boy, that was nice. 41 yards. So here is Westwood all the way down to the 35-yard line. Clock rolling at 145. Two receivers to the far side and the left side slot is Cox on the give. 21. Debs driving down to the 30. Carries the pile for a couple extra yards. And that's what you want to see on first down right there. Five yards, good stuff. Um, clock running, but you still got three timeouts. You're not necessarily in a big hurry here. Yeah. Uh, as long as you can manage your timeouts and manage the clock the right way, you can you can uh, do something good just before half here. Certainly a situation. Don't want to get in a hurry and make a mistake. Second down and five. Martinez, three-step drop, looking all night long. He could basket weave back there. Hurdles one at the 30. Not able to spin away from the second tackler is coming in on the stop. Another great open field tackle. This time it was 16 Parker. But he does pick up maybe a yard. Hey, and if you're getting one, you're getting more than zero. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's math. I know. That's math. Hey, that's 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 pretty good. I have to have a chart. Hey, well, <laughs> you're you doing know. good. Uh, we are letting this clock get down yeah. a little far. I don't know why they're letting it run down into the 42nd mark here. Uh, with all three timeouts. And all kinds of personnel changes over on Vandy's side. Maybe should have snapped that one. Yeah. Third and four. Trips to the near side. Motion man across is Anderson. Going to run the jet sweep. Turns it right up field. He's going to be about a half yard shy of the first down. And there's the man. first timeout call right there. Yep, there you go. Somebody loses a lid there for Vandy. 42, Spencer Jones. His hat comes off. Clock stops. 24 seconds remaining. With a fourth down play coming up. Fourth and about half a yard. Well, it's one of those, do you do you assume they're going to think you're going to power run with half a yard? Do you play action, maybe get something over the middle with a tight end? Yeah, I'll say this is Ian Cox territory. This right is here. definitely Ian Cox territory. Uh, but it, for me, it's one of those where you either run it straight up the middle or go for something short. You don't need to try and get it all here unless it's given to you mm -hmm. um, because you just want to get the first down and um, move the chains and try and get four more chances at it. It's been one heck of a football game. It definitely has. I'm still kind of scratching my head on with a minute left. Yeah. While you run it all the way down to 30. Yep. Um, but that's why they pay Coach Wood the big bucks is to make these decisions. Right. Exactly. Might, might have some up his sleeve. Yeah. That's yeah. Maybe maybe that's what it is. He he is the mastermind of coming out of the timeouts. So <laughs> yeah, uh, that's exactly right. I'll tell you, a great play call by you. You spotted. The, the middle of the field wide open and then they hit the man hedge they yes old, old, old hedge your bets there yeah that's exactly right we we joke about that one of our fellow broadcasters came over and he said boy that number nine that hedge he's pretty good said, yeah yeah he's pretty good hey hope all the rest of you astro fans are a little oh, better today i'll tell you i was bringing that sick. up Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you, I, I was more sick the night before. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, Jeez. I mean, you got you to – it's one of those where you got to look at Boston. you got to say, man, that is a – That's that is, a good baseball that team. That's a heck of a baseball team that's hot at the right time. Yeah. They, the same way the Astros were last year. They got exactly. hot at the right time, and that's what postseason baseball is all about. But, man, did I want to see a back-to-back oh, -back year. Me too. And then, I mean, I, I have a feeling Boston's going to have a lot of fun with whoever comes out of the NL. I would agree with that. Unless uh, – Unless L.A. can somehow yeah. pitch Kershaw five games in a row. I tell you, Kershaw looked good the other night. He Did. looked, looked a, little more, uh, a little more himself. But uh, it, it'll be great. Hey, Milwaukee, if you, if you like a good story, cheer for the Brewers. Right, yeah, there you go. All right, everybody, 24 seconds remaining in a 7 to nothing ball game. Westwood going left to right, ball on the left side hash mark. Here's this. We saw this earlier. Here's a quick huddle. Martinez out of the shotgun, standing. Very short set. Oliver Jing here to the near side. In motion across is Anderson. Timeout called by Westwood. And there's a cat patrol. It almost it came off. It didn't, it didn't hit the deck, but it came off. Yeah, he didn't like something he saw there. I'll tell you, he was busy before the game. There was all kinds of stuff going on. He's, I mean, this really, I mean, talk about last minute. I mean, every everything shifts forward. And not that you're in cruise control coming off of a bye week, but you've got everything nice and laid out and, you're not really rushing. Everyone's gone over the itinerary all week of exactly. how game day's going to go, and then all of a sudden, nope, giant wrench yep. thrown into the game plan, and uh, you got to get these kids, uh, these kids' heads right, heads right, and you got to get them in in game game mindset two hours before you even kick off. So, 
Um, and then you get going and it's raining. Yep, and it's raining. And half your lights don't well. And it's quarter of your lights don't work. One quarter of your lights don't work, and it's getting dark quick. It, it really is. I, I feel like I haven't seen the sun in a week and a half. Right. I, I came here to a playoff game. My, my Lockhart Lions actually made the playoffs a few years ago, and they had a playoff game here, ironically, against Vandegrift, and it was a day just like this. It poured. It was nasty. It was gross. So this is not the, you know... This is a big place. There's not a lot of places to hide from the rain. No, it's very open, very, very nice and open facility, but there's not a whole lot of places to go if yeah. you're trying to stay dry. Here's a fourth and one. Quick huddle from the 26. Trailing by a touchdown. They're doing that quick formation once again. Here's Martinez. Owsley out to the far side. Two men shifting across. That's Cox and Robbie Jing. They line up on the right side. <laughs> is this a timeout or... Just hoping it wasn't a flag. I mean, what, what I don't want to see is all these fancy little plays here, and then you tack five yards onto yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw I saw Drew Sanders out there was watching all the motion and everything, and he just went right up to the ref and said, nope, we're not going to deal with all this motion. Let's go <laughs> yeah. ahead and call a timeout and see yeah. if we can figure out what they're trying to do. He already called it. It was a real breezy first half, and we had four timeouts in a row. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Screeching halt. Air brakes. <laughs> 24 seconds. The clock's been stuck on 24 seconds for the past three and a half minutes. That's right. That's football time. we got to hand it to all these folks. There's a lot of people here with, I mean, and they're sitting out in this slop. It's lots of umbrellas out here. Lots of umbrellas. Look at the tribe, though. A bunch of them ain't covered up. You know. You know that they're going to be out here. They're definitely making the uh, the Vandergrift uh, student section look, uh, look a little, yeah. little small over there. We, we love the tribe. Shout yeah. out to the tribe. They're always out here supporting and doing the things that they do, yelling and screaming and getting rowdy. I tell you, those tribes that are getting all wet, my dearly departed rest her soul grandmother would say they better get home tonight and put mentholatum all over their chest and their feet because they're going to catch a cold being out in the rain like that. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's, that's what they say. That, that's, that's, that's classic grandma talk right there. <laughs> classic, classic Hispanic grandma right there. <laughs> Fourth and one. Let's try it again. For the third time. One timeout for each side. Hell, let's just burn all the timeouts now. Here's a motion man across. Oh, my goodness. Trouble with the ball. And Martinez, after all of that, will lose two yards. The ball goes over on downs to Vandy. And the longer they waited, the wetter that ball got. And, and the more that uh, this offense had to think about it and think about how, what could go wrong, I guess, because that was – one of very few things that could have gone wrong there was that ball being slippery and, and a bad snap and Martinez not being able to hang on to it. And um, getting back um, almost to the line of scrimmage and almost getting close to picking up the first down, but yeah. a loss of one or two there, um, just a giant miscue. Dang it. Yep. And you got you to think that does – with, with the big play receivers they have, is Vandergrift going to take a shot here with 18 seconds? Yeah, looking back, maybe you should try to kick that one, even in, in this mess. Here's a give. Smallwood takes it, gets to the 30 all the way down to the 38, make it the 39, picks up the first down. The clock stops momentarily at 12 as they get ready to roll or move the chains over on the far side. Line of scrimmage will be the 39. Three backs in the backfield, single receiver to each side. Five seconds remaining as the clock ticks. Here is the handoff. Second man through. That is the running back, number five, Bennett. He's brought down all the way on the other side of the field at the 34-yard line, 39-yard line, but that will be the end of the half. A very well-played first half, both sides of the ball for Westwood, Stephen. It's only 7 to nothing. Yeah, you really are, are very happy with the way that your team overall has played. More happy with your the way your defense has played, obviously holding this this high-powered Vandy offense, only seven points and only that one big play. Um, you had the one big play on your own side, uh, on the offensive side of the ball, but you couldn't, you weren't able to turn it into points. Um, but you've seen what works so far. You've seen a whole first half against uh, this undefeated, we'll say it again, undefeated mm -hmm. Vandergrift Vipers team, and you're only down by seven points. So it's, it's one of those things that you just got to go in the half, make your adjustments, and, and have your offense come out and, and really run the ball, and then you use the run to, to go into play action. So yeah. I really yeah. think that it's um, there's a long way to go in this game, yeah. and, and they're, they're very much very much in this game. It could very much win, uh, very well win this game. Absolutely. Yeah. No, this great first half. Great first half of football. And, uh, yeah, we will, uh, we're going to have a very entertaining second half. Home
coming, coming up. Your halftime score here from the reservation. Vandy leads Westwood by a score of seven to nothing. Take a quick break and come back. Warrior football continues in just a moment. Bright Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, B Y P E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. At K Max Sports, we work hard to provide quality professional broadcasts to make it easier for the booster clubs with whom we work to find sponsorships. We ask that you please patronize these advertisers and thank them for supporting your team's broadcasts. You can help your booster club fund the broadcast by simply clicking on the donate button on kmaxsports.com. And if you're a fan of the other school, you can show your appreciation for tonight's broadcast by making a donation as well. Thank you in advance for your support. And now, let's take you back out to the game. During the homecoming season, we honor our seniors by selecting Bow and Sweethearts from the clubs and organizations on campus. Here on the 2018-2019 Westwood Bow and Sweethearts. Football, Mario Devs. Academy Ambassadors, Alton Nagy and Kelsey Adil. AFJROTC, Miles Martinez and Nicole Peralta. ASL Club. Gavin Thompson and Harmony Thornhill. Athletic training, Zach Wallace and Lily Tillett. Ballroom Dance Club, Simon Thomas and Abby Smith. Band, Justin Carver and Isabel Grudowski. Baseball, Mason Flood and Avery Hudson. Boys and Girls Soccer, Jack Elliott and Stephanie Jubella. Cheer, Riley Smith. Chinese Club, James Dong and Lillian Chang. Chinese Yo-Yo Club, Stephen Chu and Barsha Alexis. Choir, Zaini Chowdhury and Sophia Norton. Cross Country, Colton Roberts and Sean Bowie. Debate, Emily Gao and Lynette Page. Drama Club, Sarah Lynn and Isabel Cameron. Gender Sexuality Alliance, Madeline Moody and Ayanna Johnston. Girls Basketball, Tony Voodoo and Christy French. Golf, Austin Chung. Kosa, Hobby Saini and Margaret Sayak. IBSO, Alexa Lizzo and Katie Lee. Men's and Women's Lacrosse, Ben Jensen, and Ava Shue. Latin, Johanna Tatum. K-pop club, Katie Chong and Michelle Wong. National French Honor Society, Anthony Pham and Emma Farkach. National Honor Society, Sabanian Malpani and Galen Kim. So we're going to jump back in here. We'll get back to our homecoming festivities here in just a little bit, but we do have, uh, we talked about it there as we were going through the first half. Uh, Jeff Loker has joined us uh, from Whataburger here with uh, Stephen and, and Sang and I. And uh, Jeff, well, welcome to the uh, palatial confines here in a sloppy, how was, your, how was your drive here first? It was full, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. It was nonstop going down Farmer. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that perfect. Perfect. Oh, yeah, so Palmer's always fun to get on to come here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, a little early. So, and again, thanks. Uh, we, we talk about you guys all, all the time up here in the booth. So uh, what, what's the extent uh, this year with, with uh, Whataburger's involvement uh, here with Westwood Athletics? Well, this is the first year that we got involved with Westwood. I um, appreciate you having us here for sure. Absolutely. And we love taking care of the students. Uh, I get a lot of students into my restaurant, which is right by Westwood. Uh, so it's my high school uh, nice. right there. Uh, so it's, it's really good to take care of them and see them on a daily basis. That's awesome. Yeah, and so what, what was the process like? How did Whataburger necessarily get involved uh, with, with Westwood Athletics and, and Westwood High? 
Well, we went through the Booster Club, and uh, we sponsored uh, some of the uh, gift cards for him. We did a fundraiser for him, too. Uh, the gift cards help feed the football players because we know either before or after a game, a lot of times after a game, uh, they're hungry, and they're going to come in and sure. see us. So we definitely take care of them with that. Yeah, that's awesome. So Whataburger, synonymous with Texas. I mean, it's a, it's, yes. it's a staple here. I mean, we all love it. We eat it at all hours. All hours, it, it doesn't matter. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything. It's just second dinner, second breakfast. Yes. Uh, after hours. <laughs> yes. In yeah. my in my own personal experience. Absolutely. But talking about Westwood, what other activities is Whataburger involved with uh, throughout the community? And and I know you guys are everywhere. Yeah, we are. We're we're in sports a lot of different ways. We've got sponsorships with annual baseball tournaments, little league teams, hosting youth sports and fundraisers. We always want to provide uh, good opportunities for the students, student athletes, encourage the talented students to succeed in both athletics and, and academics for sure. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, a, a lot of us around around the state of Texas kind of understand, but can you give us, you know, just a, for those of the, for those of us that don't know, just like a brief background on on Whataburger and what it means, kind of what it means to the state of Texas uh, for for its and now, what uh, citizens of Texas. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, we started out down in Corpus Christi, 1950, <laughs> and then, yeah, you got Corpus a coastal Christi. guy back here. I, I'm I'm from down in Corpus too, nice, so nice. grew up down there, enjoy the area. And, uh, you know, our, our founder, Harmon Dobson, when he started in 1950, he wanted a burger that was big enough to eat in both hands. And uh, when they were done with it or when they saw it, he wanted to say, what a burger. So it, it stuck, and that's what he wanted, and it's been going ever strong ever, ever since. Funny story for you, my, uh, my kids, I have two daughters, and, and we used to take them down to Corpus when they were small. And one thing we had to do when we went down there, they said, Dad, we we got to go to the glamorous Waterburger, the the one yes. right there, uh, right there on, on the shoreline. Shore yeah, yes. on, on shoreline. Had, had to make that one. We talk about burgers, we talk about fries, we talk about the ketchup, all that good stuff. Here on the broadcast, we've been talking about uh, the the A1 uh, burger. Talk more about those menus. It's it's more than just burgers. It is. Well, for the for the A1 thick and hearty, that just came back and. Yeah. That's that's a good one all by itself. That, that never stops. That never stops. There's really over 36,000 different ways to make a water burger, so you can put it together however you want. Uh, so it's it's very uh, it's very great to be involved with them and, and to be able to serve people on a regular basis, especially when they can pick that many things at all times of hours too. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things. I'm sure when you get get a bus full of full of hungry football players coming in, your your staff has to be like, okay. Oh. How many different ways are we yeah. going to make a make a water burger today? <laughs> so it's um, there's definitely different ways to do it. Yeah, and how cool is it for you? And this is actually this would be just kind of a different question that I just thought of being being a part of something as Texan as water burger and 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 you know your length of time there with them. How, how cool is it? That's that's actually a cool company to work for because that's it's a staple. It is. It is, and it's family owned. It's been family owned since day one. And it's when you start out down at Corpus Christi like I did and then up here in Austin, it's just, it is part of Texas. People walk in and they know exactly where the first Whataburger was. Uh, there's longtime folks that look at the pictures on our walls and see the very first Whataburger up there. And they remember it. And it just, it makes you feel good inside. It really does. And, and the family takes very good care of us. And always have, always will, always has our best interest in mind. Whataburger and H-E-B. I mean, that's yeah. kind of, that's the way it goes. <laughs> but quickly, we, we, we talk about Texas. Uh, not just in Texas anymore. It, it, it's kind of grown a little bit. Ten states all together. Wow. South, mo mostly southeast, out to Arizona, New Mexico, and then over to Florida. Teach yeah, those, I, I teach went, those folks how to do it right. Oh, yeah. I went, I went to uh, college up there in uh, Oklahoma. And we had a Whataburger. We had we had a couple of competitors near near where I was living, and there was a Whataburger all the way across town. And I bet you you can guess where I was going. <laughs> I was getting an Uber all the way across town yeah. to make sure I got my Whataburger. So. Got to tell you, I love driving through San Antonio and seeing Whataburger University over there on, yes. on the side of the that, – that is pretty cool. That is awesome. It, is that do, – do all employees go to that, or is it just – is that – Eventually, everybody can definitely go to it. Really? Yeah, that, that's something that they started just to, just to train managers, general managers, and and uh, it's just it's a good environment to get in there and learn something. Continue to learn the history because you just you're always learning something, and it's always changing. That's awesome. And waterburger has got such a rich culture; it, it never ends. So it's good to get down there and see that place. That's great. That's great. And and tonight, homecoming here for you. Uh, your thoughts. Uh, you know, uh, other than the weather and maybe missing some lights, uh, pr pretty cool night so far. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good night. It's not raining too hard, so uh, 
it'll be a good night for them. They should win. Yeah, I, I hope so. I hope Me so. Me too. Whataburger orange, Westwood orange, yes. great combination. Great combination. Jeff Loker, thank you so much, uh, n- you. not only for joining us, but your involvement with the Booster Club. Those are great folks, and, and we here in the broadcast booth appreciate all of your support with them. Thank you. All right, absolutely. Open door anytime. Come on back and see us. We'll get ready to head back down to the field. More homecoming activities. Looks like the Warrior Band and Sundancers on the field. Air Force Junior ROTC Sabres Detail. From Kai Brown, Cadet Second Lieutenant Chase Short. Cadet Master Sergeant Alyssa Herman. Cadet Aaron Baker, Joe Delgado. Cadet Captain Richard Nevada. Cadet Senior Master Sergeant Emily Ewing. Cadet Master Sergeant Patrick Manning. To that second lieutenant, Samantha Casario. To that staff sergeant, Aditi Hyerman. To that staff sergeant, Tatiana Tiamali. And to that second lieutenant, Regina Nabado. Welcome to the 2018 Westwood Homecoming Halftime Presentation. Westwood Student Council would like to thank HEB for their generous flower donations for tonight's event. They would also like to thank the AFJROTC for their help with the homecoming pep rally and tonight's Saber Art for the homecoming court. Thank you to our principal, Mario Lacosta, for your help this week. Finally, Westwood Student Council would like to thank and wish the Westwood Warrior Band good luck at their competition. And now, it is my honor to introduce to you the 2018 Homecoming Court. Hayden Hashu, escorted by Paula and Randy Hashu. Hayden helps with the Special Olympics and partners in PE at Caraway Elementary. Hayden aspires to be a pilot for commercial airlines. One thing on his bucket list is that he would love to see Texas win a national championship in person. His role model is his dad because he is the most dependable, hardworking, and selfless person he knows. His favorite song is Life in the Fast Lane by the Eagles. This is Hayden Hashem. Bella Cower, escorted by Amy and Robert Cower and William Cowell. Bella is a member of the clarinet section of the Westwood Warrior Band, Latin Club, Chinese Yoga Club, National Honor Society, Town and Country Soccer, and Pros. Bella's goal is to become a lawyer to save the world through environmental law. Bella's bucket list includes completing her college applications and traveling with Samir to 42 Wallaby Way in Sydney, Australia. Her favorite song is Forever by Chris Brown. This is Bella Cowart. Ian Ibarra, escorted by Romina Ibarra, David Ibarra, and Mighty Ibarra. Ian is a member of the Jewish Warrior Club, Volume Club, Student Press, and Masonic Jewish Congregation at his church. He aspires to study psycholinguistics and eventually move to Israel and work there. His bucket list includes his wanting to host a charity event for a program that establishes education for countries that need it. His role model is Jesus of Nazareth. He admires Jesus' faith, perseverance, generosity, and intelligence. His favorite song is Glory to Glory by Bethel. This is Ian Abarth. Erica Hauser, escorted by Anne-Marie and Scott Hauser. 
Erica is a member of HOSA, PROS, UNICEF, National Art Honor Society, and her church youth group. Erica aspires to pursue a career in medicine, but she is not sure what specialty she would like to go into. Erica's bucket list includes studying abroad for part of her college education. Her role model is her father, because he always puts others before himself, works incredibly hard for the family, and prepares her for the real world. Her favorite song is The Way You Make Me Feel by Michael Jackson. This is Erica Hauser. Samir Jane, escorted by Super Jane, Laura Jane, and Siona Jane. Samir is a member of the trumpet section of Westwood Band, National Honor Society, HOSA, Chemistry Club, Town and Country Basketball, Pros, and serves as an Eagle Scout. Samir aspires to become a pediatric surgeon in the future. His bucket list includes doing backflips and traveling with Bella to 42 Wallaby Way in Sydney. His role models are his mom and dad because they always know the right things to do in very difficult situations and are always looking for ways to help others. His favorite song is Candy Pink by Post Malone. This is Samir James. Shifa Irfan, escorted by Jenny K. Shifa is a dance or at Westwood. Shifa aspires to attend Texas a and University and study pediatrics. Her bucket list includes wanting to make herself and her parents proud of her at some point in her life. Her role model is her mother because she's always there to support and love her. Her favorite song is Die by Ed Sheeran. This is Shifa Irfan. James Jolman, escorted by Delaney Foster. James is a member of Pros and the Westwood football team. James aspires to do something in the STEM field as a career. His bucket list includes wanting to go skydiving and sleeping for 24 straight hours. His role model is his grandfather because he can still beat him in arm wrestling. His favorite song is Michael Jackson's Remember the Time. This is James Jarman. <laughs> Malvika Patil, escorted by Deirdre Mantia and Jack Elliott. Malvika is a member of the Westwood Golf Team, Pace Setters, National Honor Society, and PTSA. Malvika aspires to major in biology. And one thing on her bucket list is that she would love to swim with sharks. Malvika's role model is Deirdre Mantia because she is the best friend a girl could ever ask for. Her favorite song is Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. This is Malvika Patil. to be a sports medicine physician. His bucket list includes going up north to Canada or Alaska to watch the Northern Lights. Ani's role model are his mom and dad, always supporting him in everything he does. His favorite song is Charlie Brown by Coldplay. This is Ani Shiro. Julia Ruiz, escorted by Sherry and Randall Ruiz. 
Julia is the sun dancer president, Pace Setter's treasurer, a member of the National Honor Society's Miracle League, and is involved in her church youth group. She aspires to become a business owner and to inspire others. Julia's bucket list includes traveling to all seven continents. Her role model is her mom because she is the most loving and supportive mom ever. And she's also the best friend. Julia hopes to be an amazing mom herself one day. This is Julia Ruiz. Wyatt, escorted by Melody and Wesley Wyatt. Trevor is involved with both Westwood Theater and Musical Theater. He aspires to become a theater teacher or fashion consultant. Trevor's bucket list includes traveling to New Zealand someday. His role model is Sarah Bareilles, who co-wrote Waitress, because she's an amazing singer, writer, and activist. His, his favorite song is She Used to Be Mine from Waitress. This is Trevor Wyatt. <laughs> Vivian Tran, escorted by Trini Nguyen. Vivian plays clarinet in the Westwood Warrior Band and is a member of the Junior Classical League. Trium, Music Honor Society, Hosa and National Honor Society. Vivian aspires to become a dentist and join a group dentistry. Her bucket list includes visiting Vietnam to meet her family, go canoeing, and swimming with sea turtles. Her role models are her mom and dad because they have constantly proven to her the value of family. Her favorite song is Hakuna Matata from The Lion King. This is Vivian Tran. And now, to crown your winners, are last year's homecoming king and queen, James Yan and Hansi Nathan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your 2018 homecoming king is Ani Sriram. And your 2018 homecoming queen is Vivian Tran. Congratulations to our king and queen and the entire court. And let's give them one more big round of applause. Celestial Motions. Also, join us Saturday evening back here at Kelly Reeves as your Westwood Warrior Band competes in the ULO Region Walking Contest. Westwood kicks off the competition with a performance. Well, I was kind of hoping Cactus Jack or James Jarman win that. Yeah, you'd like, you know, you'd like to see that, but you know, congratulations to uh, all the nominees and the winners of the 2018 Westwood High School Homecoming uh, King and Queen. You know, as it goes. I remember my high school days. I was never involved in any of this. They, they told me way back when I was in high school, way back when we used to write on, uh, write with uh, chisels. Ah, uh, yes, uh, way back, way back then. They told me, you know, there were five. They only have five back. Well, maybe there were five there. There were a lot of people down there. But I remember they told me 
man, you were close. You got sixth. Heck like, yeah. Oh, oh, great. How many How many people, how many other people got sixth? Yeah, yeah. how many sixth place finishers were there? Participation. You came in sixth with zero votes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you came in sixth with the rest of the class. With the rest of everybody. Ah, <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, no, I, I see, for me, it would have been one through five, the rest of the class is sixth, and then me at seventh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't even on the ballot. Oh, Lord. Yeah, they, oh, Lord. They, they thought I had already graduated. Or maybe I should have. They called you, sir. They're like, <laughs> yeah. sir, uh, step yeah. off the field. Sir, please get yeah. off the field. Yeah, they thought I was, yeah, worked there or something, you know. We worked in the stadium crew. Of course, I come to these games, especially when I'm wearing these pants. They think I'm a ref. Coach. Yeah, coach. Hey, coach. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Say, go run some laps. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Give me 10. <laughs> Make as many people run laps as possible. Yeah, give me 10. So if you're just joining us, where have you been? Because we started early. We started an hour and 20 minutes ago. Yeah, and this has been fun. This has been a lot of fun. And the, the one of the things that we, we've noticed here, Palmer Lane is always bad, but Palmer Lane is especially bad uh, right now because, it's, you know, folks are just getting out of here, getting, getting out of work. And uh, we've played a half football, and these Westwood Warriors, the men in orange, coming off a of bye week, have played a stellar football game to this point. Yes, absolutely. You really have to be proud of the way that the whole team has played together. Um, we've, we've mentioned it before. This defense looks very, very strong right mm -hmm. now. You can tell they got rested up. They got their minds right. They got their game plan right. And they've come out, and they've held this Vandergrift Vipers team. What I've been looking up is the number 17th ranked team in the state of Texas to seven points in the first half. Pretty that is impressive. something you've got to be very, very happy about. Um, and you also have to look at your offense and say, well, you know, this is you're playing against a very talented defense. Sure. And you've been able to move the ball effectively. You're still, um, you know, scoreless on the evening, but you've got an entire half of football. You go into the locker room, make some adjustments, come out here, and um, really, really see if you can put your foot down on the gas pedal and see if you can, and, uh, can put some more points on the board. Uh, before the clock hits that uh, yeah. triple zero. Yeah. Thanks to Jeff Loker for coming by as we talked a little bit of Whataburger. Speaking of Whataburger, Whataburger fans, got some tasty news for you. Proud to announce that the bold chorizo taquito with cheese is back. Get emails about that. Why do you say it like that? Because that's how you're supposed to that's say it. how it said. We wrap a warm tortilla around a freshly scrambled eggs, a slice of American cheese, and hot off the grill chorizo to create a breakfast so delicious that it must be tasted to be believed. You better get there in a hurry because it's only for a limited time. Available from 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. And thanks to the rest of our Booster Club sponsors, we'll talk more about them here in the second half. Vandy's ready. <laughs> Look Andy at them. is on the field. Hey, I was scrolling through and I found, just so we can get a Whataburger shout out in there, we got one score for you here on the Whataburger oh! scoreboard. Manor Connolly last night. Manor with the 57 to 14 blowout win over Connolly. That's your Whataburger scoreboard. Ah, now back to the game. Ah, there you go. <laughs> that one, A1 Thick and Hearty Burger. Right there. Right there. Right there. Short and sweet. Short and sweet and tangy. Tangy. Juicy. <laughs> so dropping back will be Bennett along with Cameron Price. They stand back around the 20 as Cactus Jack Elliott, oh so close in the homecoming festivities, gets ready to kick it off. His first kickoff of the night. Here's the kick. We'll kick it short. Fair catch called for and made at the 40. As getting under that was Bo Dawson. The Cactus Jack specialty. A little short kick there. A couple uh, every now and again. Got to watch out. This Westwood team is going to pounce on that ball and, and uh, get a short field. Line of scrimmage will be the 40 here for Vandy. They're going to go right to left here in the third quarter. Here's Dawson. Splitting two receivers out to the far side. He's got his two big guns out there. Two backs in the backfield. Dawson, swing pass complete. This one at the 41. Turning up field. Dropped by Brown at the 46-yard line. As this time, it is one of his favorite targets here, Mongozi. Yeah, then these these receivers, Mongozi and Merrifield, are just, you get them the ball in the open field and they can make you miss. Great tackling so far by the DBs from Westwood. Cover a lot of ground. Here is a swing pass once again. Mongozi at the 45, trying to get to midfield. That's where the first down marker is. Let's check the spot. Looks like they'll...
give him the first down if Ooh, he gets to the generous. 49. Boy, wasn't it? That's generous. Demetrius Jones really uh, let him have it there towards um, at the sideline, driving him into the ground, but they gave him the spot, which is uh, kind of unfortunate. Ball on the right side, hash mark. Here's Dawson on the give. Smallwood, big hole off a of right guard, breaks a tackle down to the 40. He's going to get 12 yards, make it 11 as he gets to the 39. Isaiah Smallwood with a big hitter. He kind of we've just been waiting for him to make a big play. Yeah, he's he's their workhorse back. Um, they really haven't been running him too much. I don't know if they were trying to save him for the second half or what, whatnot. But um, he gets a big one there, and really, Westwood defense comes out, kind of gets punched in the mouth a little bit on their heels, but. Um, let's see if they can really stand up here. First and 10 for the Vipers. Let's see if they can get a negative play. A lot of facets to this offense. Here's Dawson out of the gun. Motion man across is 13. Mongozi out of the gun. Dawson, Smallwood in the backfield. Turns, gives. Smallwood at the 40. Brought down. Great tackle. As he had Vicente Ochoa jump on his back and just drop him straight down after a two-yard gain. And I, maybe that's why they weren't running Smallwood in the first half because he's not really getting a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah, this, this front, Damon Harris, Brown, these guys have been superb today. They Urban have Flores, been. yeah, these monsters. They've been able to get a great push and get some pressure on the quarterback, clogging up, clogging up those running holes and um, limiting this, this offense. From the 37, here's Dawson going to call his own number, running right, breaks a tackle, gets away from Harris, but he does not get away from Eric Hawkins. Hawkins pins him back. Half a yard loss, and this defense makes another big play. Yeah, and here we can bring up third and long. Hawkins has made a couple good uh, tackles on, an, on a, in the open field on the quarterback tonight to really stop some big plays, and he got another one right there. Uh, big third down here, Rodney. Let's see if they can get a stop. Bo Dawson into the ball game as a third receiver. Merrifield, Mongozi here to the near side. In the backfield is Smallwood with Dawson standing out of the shotgun. Play clock at 14. Third down and nine from the 37. Here's Dawson, takes it, rolling left. Bo Brown is there. Dawson breaks a tackle. This time he will take the pile to the first down marker. Boy, they had him in the backfield. And he gets to the middle of the field once again and just carries the load. And he even gets stopped about two yards before the first down marker, and then he just gets a big push and keeps his legs churning. Uh, tough break there for the for the Westwood defense. From the Westwood 29, here's Mongozi in motion on the first down play. Turns gives Smallwood, makes a move at the line of scrimmage, and is wrestled down by Jones after a gain of about three. Yeah, and everything was kind of blocked up there. Good, uh, good vision. Good vision by Smallwood to bounce it outside, but again, this defense is just pushing everything towards the middle and keeping everything in front of them, not letting anything uh, break for, for too big of a play, only giving up about two and a half, three yards on that run. Second down and eight from the Westwood, 27 as we play here in the second half. 8.54 to go in the third quarter. Dawson out of the shotgun, single receiver to each side, motion man Dawson across as he goes left to right. Here's Dawson on the give, trying to run right, and another good defensive stop on the ball carrier there, Bennett. As Bennett gets to the 26, so he gets a yard. He got it the hard way. He's trying to get along the line of scrimmage there. Just couldn't get away from the linebackers. And what I'm seeing so far is that this Vandergriff team is just content with trying to get their playmakers in open field. But this Westwood defense is, is making tackles and, and being in the right position and staying disciplined that, that they're not really able to get a whole lot. Third down and six from the 25. Here is Dawson. Looks batted away. Who else? Demand Harris. Demand Harris gets up there. Great pressure off the edge. Beats his man immediately. Untouched. And then perfectly times the jump to knock that ball down, bringing up a fourth down. Um, and here we go again. Vandergriff not afraid. Going, going for it on fourth down for their third time tonight. I think they're one for two tonight. Yeah, yeah. Westwood has been really good on fourth down here tonight. Fourth and six from the 25-yard line. Keep an eye on number four, quarterback Drew Dawson. We've seen him scramble tonight. Got to make sure you don't lose him. Sort and Mongozi out to the near side, two to the far side. Now motion man across. Here is Dawson looking, throws over the middle. That one complete. That is Merrifield at the 11, picks up the first down. And really good teams convert those plays. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's just essentially too easy. Um, I guess they, he just finds the zone. He reads his DB and makes the cut into the middle there. From the 11, here's Dawson off a of play action, gets to the 10, turns up field. He's swarmed at the 6. Dropped down there by Harris Ochoa, leading the pack along with Jones from the secondary. A gain of four to bring up second down and goal. Well, I tell you, it's been these 
quick hitting plays that have gotten this defense, and there's only been a couple of them. There's only been a yep. You you said it exactly right. I mean, you get them to a fourth and six, and you just either have the wrong defense called in there or they check to something in the right play, but just an unfortunate uh, pickup for them on fourth. Second and goal from the five. Two backs in the backfield for Dawson. No receivers. Second man through. Smallwood still churning. He will be down at the one. And that's that's what he does best. He's, he's your power guy. He's just going to hand him the ball inside the red zone and let him get to work. And uh, Drew Dawson here is really trying to speed this up, trying to get the ball snapped quickly to try and catch yeah. this defense off guard. No wide out. Smallwood in the backfield on the third and goal play. Breaking a tackle and into the end zone is Smallwood. One yard plunge. Touchdown, Vandy. And the only thing you can say about that drive is that fourth down conversion is what did it. I mean, every, you do everything right Yeah. as the Westwood defense right there, except for you give up that one 11-yard pickup uh, where – just kind of a miscommunication on your coverage and nobody was there but other than that you played that drive very very well so yeah you really just need your offense to come out here and bail you out tim barney for the extra point his second one of the night as we work towards the seven minute mark snap a little high able to get that down and boots it right through the middle 706 to go in the third quarter your new score vandy 14 westwood nothing here on homecoming night friends don't forget to visit the new Ferguson Bath Kitchen and Lighting Gallery in the Arboretum Crossing Shopping Center located on the northwest corner of 183 in Mopac. You can schedule your appointment today, or maybe not today, Monday, with a trained consultant for all your plumbing, appliance, and lighting remodel and new construction needs. Visit fergusonshowrooms.com for more details. And thanks to Ferguson for being a continued supporter of Westwood football. More information at Warrior Sports. Dot org. 14 to nothing. And Vandy gets down the field. Well, and kind of very similar to the first half. Um, you know, you have that turnover and they score. They score on their first possession of the game and then they don't score again. So, um, you know, you, you really, you're you really not mad about the defense right now. They're playing their butts off. Uh -huh. They're playing their hearts out. And uh, just a couple of plays here and there have really given up the points. Uh, but now you need your offense to respond and uh, pull yourself back in this game. DeBerry and Anderson stand back at the five. Here's Barney to kick it off. And he is lined way back. He is going to put the boot into this one. So you got a couple of speedsters back there. Special teams play can really get some momentum happening. Here's Barney's kick. This one heading way back to Anderson. He'll field it at the 10, out to the 15. The 20, reaching for the 25, driven out of bounds right there around the 28-yard line. As in on the stop is Reese Watson, the senior. And it'll be first down there for the Warrior offense as they look to get some points on the board. Well, and that right there is why people haven't been kicking it, kicking it to Anderson this year is because he's so explosive when he gets into open field that he fields that ball about the 9-yard line. And before you know it, you blink, he's at the 25 and he's meeting your coverage team at the 29 mm -hmm. uh, instead of the other way around. You want your coverage team to meet him at the 10. He's already up to the 30, so great return. Here's the Warriors. They go left to right in the third. Five minutes burned off of the clock there on that Vandy scoring drive. Out of the gun, and on the give is 21, Debs. And he's driven backwards there. He's trying to follow Lakowski. Gets a couple of yards. He think he might be running extra hard. He's a little upset he didn't win the king. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Second and eight from the 32. Didn't win the kingship. Actually at the 34. Here's RJ rolling left. And he's looking. Throws this one. Nice. Picked off. Looked like Hegde was going to grab that, but it is picked off by Vandergriff. Is stepping in front is Drew Nelson. And that's, um, I don't know if he was bobbling it. I don't know if you can go back. There's no such thing as reviews in high school football, unfortunately. But that was a heck of a, of a defensive play. Um, maybe RJ holds onto the ball just a little bit too long, allowing him to cover up, uh, cover some more of that ground. But, I mean, he, it, was a, it was the right play there. He had the man. Hegde looked like he was open. And he was coming back to the ball to pick it up. But just an even better defensive play there. Um, Yep. Now your your defense back on the field. Nelson with the pick, and here is the Vandergriff offense. They lead 14 to nothing. 6:31 to go in the third. Out of the shotgun stands Dawson. Single receiver to each side. Turns, gives Smallwood. He's got running room right up the gut. Ten yards on first down. Make it eight. Gets over to the Westwood side of the field, and it'll be second and two. Quickly back. Here's Dawson. 
Hmm. Lines up the troops, single receiver to each side, stands out of the shotgun, giving it to Smallwood, bounces, run and right. Gets to the edge, gets to the 40, picks up the first down, still moving and grooving down to the 38-yard line, finally dropped down there. And on the stop for Westwood, number 40, Jaleel Davis, but now we're seeing Smallwood. We're seeing a lot of Smallwood because the Vandergriff offensive line is finally being able to get a push against this defensive front of Westwood. From the Warrior 38, Mongozi in motion. They run the jet sweep, turning right on the far sideline, driven out of bounds by Jones, and that'll momentarily slow down the momentum here just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit, but it's tough when your defense is out there, and, and whenever your offense is out there, they're only playing two, three, four plays at a time, and this defense doesn't get a chance to, to catch a breath. I mean, you can see all of them, hands on hips. They're just exhausted because they've been playing their hearts out, and uh, now they're getting their, their, their fatigue. Yeah. Uh, it's not getting quite the same push. They're not able to, to get off blocks as easy, and it's allowing Smallwood to uh, just kind of run, run wild right now. Been on the field this whole quarter. Here's Dawson off the play action, throwing the deep ball over on the far side. That one complete to Demetrius Jones on the far side. They say he's out of bounds. That's just a miscommunication there, and oh man, that's that's unfortunate because I think he caught that ball with one foot in. I thought he had a foot in. Again, we can't review this, but man, and we're a little seems, ways up over here. The lights do work over there. They do, and I've got <laughs> I've got pretty decent vision, but uh, it all happens pretty quickly. And that's you know the ref is right there down. He was probably the distance from me to you to, uh, to yeah. Demetrius Jones there, so. But it just seems like all of the breaks right now, whether it's Martinez throwing a pick or, you know, yeah. Demetrius Jones being just out of bounds on that, everything's going Vandergriff's way. Here's a third and seven. Pass complete. Mongozi at the 30. Needs to get to the 28. And he's dropped at the 32. So he's, no. No, he did get the first down. Pardon me. That's a, got exactly that's what he needed. Yeah, he did. Got right spot. to the 28. Yeah, I thought he was down at the 30. Regardless, first and 10, doesn't matter what I think. Here is the give. Whoa! Dropped! Guess, guess who? Demand Harris. And that's sack number two on the night, and he is out here telling his defensive squad, look, we're not giving up. I'm going to make sure we're in this game, and our offense is going to have to go out yeah. there and win it. Yeah, that he, was a Stan Hansen lariat right there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so close to a horse collar. He let Drew Dawson know he was there. They've gotten to him pretty nicely tonight. Second and 15. Here's Dawson. Bennett runs at the 30, the 25. He's hit there and driven out of bounds at the uh, bounds at the 22. Open field tackle by Will Clitheroe. Clitheroe covered a lot of ground to get to Bennett. But it's a nice gain down to the 22. Quickly back, third down and five. On the snap, Bennett once again shifts directions. He'll now run left, breaks a tackle. He is brought down there. It's coming in on the stop. It's Connor Cooper. Uh, it'll bring up a fourth and very, very short. Fourth and a whisker. Do you think you're going to see number 15 here? Yeah, here he comes. Checking in. Wholesale personnel changes here. Smallwood checks in. They also bring in an extra running back, Jax McCauley. He's actually a linebacker, but he'll line up as a Jeez. fullback. An extra tight end that's a lineman. Single receiver way over to the far side is Mongozi. Smallwood, he runs, and no, he's going to be no, short. Sir. He is dropped. The Westwood defense led by Brown. Ochoa, big stop for the men in orange. They do it again for the third time tonight. They get the stop on fourth downs. Second or third time tonight, they get the stop on fourth down, and that one is the biggest one yet because Vandergriff comes down here and opens up a 21-0 lead. You're in, a, you're in a world of hurt. But uh, the defense out here just showing who they are, flexing their muscles. And that just, we, we've talked about 13-6A all year. Tonight is just such an example where you've got a team on the outside looking in, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with an undefeated one. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And this Westwood team is hungry. Left to right, empty backfield, trips to the near side. And now it's standing behind Martinez, or actually, yeah, right to his right is Anderson. Anderson takes the, you know, he does not, keeping his Martinez. And he battles down to the 25 for a gain of six. A lot of movement back there. I thought we might see something shifty. Yeah, there's a lot of movement, but um, that looked like it was a um, quarterback draw all the way. Mm -hmm. Play action. Martinez takes one little pump fake and then just takes off in the middle. Quick six. Jing Hegde and you here to the near side. Owsley to the far side. Anderson complete. 
Owsley at the 30 to the 31, first down Warriors. Nice conversion. Absolutely. Great pass. That's right. That's what you want to see from Martinez. What we've kind of seen from him in, in this season is if he doesn't get out to that hot start, he starts to settle in here in the second half. He starts to make all the right throws. So let's look for that right now and see if he can get a, a good drive going here. 3.32 to go in the quarter. First and 10 from the 32. Here's Martinez looking. Complete Owsley. Little bubble screen. Dangerously that ball gets off the fingertips. And that could have been disastrous. Luckily, Tavon got his hands on that enough where it fell behind him. Yeah, it's just a uh, – they've run this play a few times tonight, and it hasn't yet to work. Um, first time Martinez kind of uh, uh, leads Tavon a little too far, and that time Tavon just drops the ball. Um, unfortunate because it looked like if he makes one man miss, he could go a little ways. I'm with you, though. That, that middle of the field is still wide open. It's, it's, it's there for the taking. Second down and 10 out of the shotgun. Here's Martinez. Trips to the near side. Single receiver to the far side. One man in the slot to the left. Here's the motion man. That is Anderson rolling. Wide open is Oliver U at the 40. Hauls it in. Complete all the way down to the 28-yard line. Big hitter. Same play from earlier. We're going to Luby's. There's the Oliver U special. There it is. Right there. He was wide open. A little bit underthrown there from Martinez, but great patience by you to come back to the ball to make sure he secured the catch. Here we go. We're moving, boys. From the 31-yard line, first and 10, 317 remaining. Complete, Owsley on a bubble screen. Gets to the 29. Boy, I tell you, Owsley goes over the middle, and <laughs> that dude's not afraid to take a shot. No, he's not, which is kind of scary because that's your backup QB. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, exactly. Just don't hit him in the arm or his legs. Just don't hit him. Just don't hit, hit him. him. Let him let, go in. Let him score. Jing is the motion man, second down and eight. Here's Martinez, complete. This one is Owsley once again. Boy, he went down kind of odd there. I thought they might have had him by the face mask. That's coming in on the stop was Reese Watson. And I'll tell you, Stephen, now we can see it. It's dark over there. It definitely <laughs> it is dark, dark over, over there. there. And, uh, I mean, it's it, once you get to the 50-yard line, it is substantial what, yeah. the, what, the, vis what the visibility is. It's, it's actually kind of crazy to think about. But they've got enough light to keep playing, so... It's an eerie scene out there. It, Actually, it really is. Kind of weird. From the 26, third down and five, 220 to go in the quarter. Here's Martinez. He's got no backs in the backfield. Trips to the far side, two to the near side. Ball sitting on the right side. Hash mark going left to right. RJ out of the gun. Standing. Takes it. Looking. Flushed out of the pocket. He's got some room right up the middle. Spins and runs right into the defender. He'll be short of the first down. Oh, and Martinez thought he was going to pull that patented spin move, and he spun right into Everton Smith. So you go for it here down 14, or do you try and get points? Looks like they've, they're keeping RJ on the field, and they want to go for seven. Yep. Offense stays out. Just 146. Yep. 147. Or 143. I'm counting. I'm all messed up we're go, here. We're going up. We're going. <laughs> going Add more way. time on it. Yeah, no. I'll tell you. It's too dark. I can't think straight. <laughs> and I need to shave. Fourth and two. Here we go. From the 23, just shy of the red zone. Fourth down opportunity. Motion man across. Robbie Jing. Uh oh, a little razzle dazzle looking downfield, looking for Owsley in a pack. Incomplete. Yeah, he had to get rid of that ball, but uh, he threw it, and there were it was it was yeah, snipped was. out the whole way. There's about five Vandergrift defenders guarding Tavon Owsley there. Yeah. Man, I, I think I would try that on second or third down. Yeah, not necessarily on uh, on fourth down. That's one of those where you just kind of say, hey. Let's just power run the ball up the middle with Nate Anderson or, or, or yep. Debs and, and see if we can get a couple of yards. If they if you if they can go toe to toe with us and stop us, good for them. But there's no, I don't know if I like the trickeration there on fourth and two. Sniffing that red zone, not able to get into it. Ball goes over on downs. Here's the Vandergriff offense back out, going right to left. Dawson, hands Bennett, running right, turns back across the green. Ball on the carpet. I think Bennett was able to get back on top of that. That took a nice hop right back into his bread basket. And Bennett does fall back on top of it. Two-yard loss. Boy, you still feel like this game is just one play away. I know, and it's every crazy? every bounce, it seems. Every bounce, every coin flip, every everything is going Vandergriff's way, and there's still Westwood's still only down by two touchdowns here with plenty of time about to head into the fourth quarter. Oh, wow, plenty of time. I looked over, and I just realized the third quarter is almost I know, over. I know. Second down and 11 from that 22-yard line. Here's the motion man. Dawson looks, flushed out. Brown with the hit, drops him. And These guys are swarming. Brown, Flores. They, they absolutely are, and this is one of those things where they've 
they made an adjustment at halftime. They realized that if they if there's a hole there, Dawson's going to take off. So don't don't try and release too far. Stay just close enough where he thinks there's a gap, and then close that gap as soon as he tries to take off. We're under 20 seconds to go. It doesn't look like Dawson's in any hurry. He is looking over towards the sideline at Drew Sanders. It's a 14 to nothing ball game as Vandy has picked up a touchdown here in the third. Westwood a drive down the field just outside the red zone, not able to convert a fourth down once again, and that's been the thing that's got the offense in trouble. End of the third quarter here from the reservation. Man, we got a good one, a little early action here as we started at 5 o'clock. Your score, Vandegrift 14, Westwood nothing. Fourth quarter coming up. Warrior football continues in a moment. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, just imagine Inner Space Caverns, if it was full of sports. Okay, so, so which way to the game? Man, it sure is dark in here for sports. Ah, dang it! Ow! Oh, that hurt. Bringing your teams to you in the stadiums, ballparks, and gymnasiums where they belong. We are KMAX Sports. Fourth quarter action coming up. Got to remind you about 2200 I-35. Of course, that is Flick's Brew House. We had them here in the booth earlier this year. Round Rock's only locally owned and operated movie theater featuring floor-to-ceiling screens, superb Dolby surround sound. Stuff sounds good in there. A real kitchen making real good food for the whole family. You love it at reasonable prices. It's all available from the comfort of your seat. During the movie... Plus, Flix is the only first-run cinema in the world with an on-site brewery, plus dozens of local and regional favorites. Check it out at FlixBrewHouse.com. All of your showtimes, the menus there. Find out why Flix is one of the fastest-growing theaters in the country. Get your tickets at FlixBrewHouse.com. We're headed to the fourth in a 14 to nothing game. Third down and 10 here now going left to right is Vandy. Dawson out of the gun. Single receiver to the near side, two to the far side. Rolling left. Dawson looks, throws this one, picked off at the 30-yard line. Mongozi able to make the stop is sneaking up and Nathan Potter picks the ball off Westwood and all kinds of business. And that's the one play you need right there. That is a big, big interception from your defense who has been the star all night. They come through with the big play, set your offense up for a short field. Got to get seven here. Um, and you score quick here. I mean, 10 seconds into the fourth oh. quarter, you score. Oh, we got ourselves a ball game here, folks. Nathan Potter sitting there. He looked like Jack in the Box. Pardon the water, Whataburger. Sorry, he looked like Jack in the Box. He, he just like came a, out of nowhere. A Jack in the Box a toy. A Jack in the Box, exactly. Just, just popped out of the air, got that, got that pick, and takes it just ever so close to the house. Yeah. You'd love to see him get in there because you'd love to see the defense be able to celebrate a touchdown there, but uh, that really turns the field, and that's, that's what you like to see. First and goal from the four. Here's a quick huddle out of the shotgun. Martinez, no backs. Motion man across is Anderson. Timeout, or timeout called by Westwood. Well, I tell you, they, they set that quick formation and then call time. That's, I think, the second or third time they've run that quick huddle right. quickly to the line and then call a timeout. I mean, that could be some of the strategy. I don't know. Well, did who? They called a timeout, but our, they're not even going to talk to Coach Wood there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who called the timeout, but... <laughs> Maybe they're mad at him. They're like, why'd you call a timeout, Coach? Well, I keep checking, and still nothing on the Waterberg scoreboard. Yeah, nobody's, nobody's ready yet. I'll tell you, little fog starting to I think I got, I got something in 2A Division 2. Ding, 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 ding. Rock Springs 13 over Menard. Mena, M Menard, yeah, Menard. Yeah, okay. And then we got Katie Mide Creek 7 over Katie Taylor 0. All right. That's your Whataburger scoreboard. Whataburger you, scoreboard Rodney. right there. And don't forget, stop by Whataburger for a limited time. The bold chorizo taquito with cheese featuring freshly scrambled eggs, a slice of American cheese, and perfectly seasoned chorizo. All wrapped up in a warm tortilla available 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. Here we go. First and goal from the four. The offense quickly up. One receiver to the far side. Motion man across. Anderson. Little play action fake. Looking. Martinez into the end zone. There's a flag right there That's as he was looking for Brown. All kinds of interference oh, right there. yeah, absolutely. And that'll put you first and goal on the half-yard line. And if you don't give the ball to Debs or Anderson four times in a row here, I don't know what you're thinking. And, and friends, you heard that. Uh, uh, our friends, uh, Judy Greer, you heard that right. Pass incomplete intended for Ethan Brown. <laughs> 
comes in to play a little tight end. Hey, you know what? They want to bring in a linebacker to be a, a, a yeah. fullback there. We'll, we'll bring in whoever we want to play receiver. You said it. The J.J. Exactly Watt right. special. The J.J. Watt. All right, here's the offense. Boy, these guys look fired up. Oh, First and goal from right the two. Down here. Oh, oh, yeah. They called the timeout. Oh, Robbie Jing. All down here by himself. Nobody around. Somebody just realized that Reese Watson's like, oh, hey, who's going to cover him? Ooh. Ever so close to just the easiest, <laughs> easiest touchdown. You could see, I couldn't see Jing's face, but you could tell by his body language, he was waving yeah, his arm was, like, give me the ball, give me the ball. And, he, was, and uh, he was panting like a thirsty dog. And Drew Sanders <laughs> realized it over there and calls timeout. But obviously, that's not a, that's not a bad thing because then you know you just had to use a timeout. You get Vandergrift to have to waste one of their timeouts kind of early in this fourth quarter, and uh, you're still sitting pretty at fourth and one or fourth and first and sorry, first and <laughs> nice goal from the two. Yeah, I want to tell you this this game being that it's the only one going right now, it, it's kind of cool for for both these teams because. It's probably getting a little special attention because it is the only game. And this one heck of a football game. It is. It is a very, very good football game here. Uh, you know, two turnovers for R.J. Martinez. Uh, really looked like that was going to be the difference in the game. And then your defense comes out here. And, Nate, uh, yeah, Nathan Potter gets a, a quick pick there and almost scores. But you really got to put the ball in the end zone here for that, for that interception to matter. Points off turnovers. That's what, that's what really it comes down to. Rest of the season for the Warriors, we said. A lot of football to go on the road next week at Bible, taking on Leander. Back here for the Warriors against Stony Point. That could be a huge game. And then the season ends here as a visitor, taking on Cedar Ridge. Really want to finish the season strong. You know, a good 4-0 uh, finish would be fantastic. You got that right. And if they got to 4-0, they'd make the playoff race kind of crazy. On the snap, the give. Anderson stretches. Oh, you got to give he's him that short. one. I don't agree with that call whatsoever. About a half yard short as he's working from the two. But that's all right. That's that's the first time you give it to Anderson. Three more of those. Plenty of time to go. Here is a snap. Anderson scoots in. No doubt this time. Touchdown, Westwood. Absolutely. And uh, I, 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 I took out my cell phone and just called Coach Wood down there and said, just <laughs> give him the ball four times. And he was like, all right, Steve. Yeah. You're right. And uh, it only took two, but we'll we'll take the six yeah. points there. Got you covered, Steve. Got you covered, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Throw his cap at you. Right, yeah, you, yeah. Cactus Jack Elliott, fresh off his homecoming appearance. Kick is up. No good. And no good. Oh, that's going to be big. Gosh, I was just about to say, these kicks are so important. I like that. These kicks are so important. 14 to 6 with 11.22 to go here in the ball game. Linda Badur, your JB Goodwin real estate agent, full service real estate, four locations of JB Goodwin across the capital city. Linda B at jbgoodwin.com. She's a Westwood parent. She'll help you with all of your real estate needs. Thank you, Linda. She does a lot for the Booster Club as well. Speaking of the Booster Club, the official side of Westwood football and the Booster Club, warriorsports.org. Check it out. It is the HEB Plus of Westwood Athletics. Follow the volleyball team, the basketball team, the golf team, all of them. All of them in one site. So at one site. 14 to 6. Yeah, we got we got a one possession game here. Uh, you got to think that when you, in the first half, if you kick two field goals there instead of trying to go for it on fourth down, it may be 14 to 12. Mm -hmm. But. Alas, that's not what it is, and your defense got to come out here and get another stop, and then hopefully you can get a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Kicking from the darkness of the 40, kicking right to left. Here's the kick. This one, fair catch called for and made there at the 34. Had the hands team out there. That was Bo Dawson. Hauls it in. It'll be first down for Vandy at the 34. It was an interception from Nathan Potter the last time out. Your defense can get you another stop. And, man... We got something to brewing. Mm -hmm. And you know that Damon Harris is out there. He's just he's at the front of that line. He's just walking back and forth pacing like he's stalking Drew Dawson here. Here's Dawson Smallwood in the backfield. They're going left to right. Two receivers to the far side, single receiver here to the near side. That's Mangozi. On the give. Smallwood stacked up by Ochoa. Ochoa takes him head on. 
he still travels forward for about four yards. Good technique there by Ochoa, but Smallwood's just strong. Yeah, it's just a big boy there and uh, keeps those legs churning, but uh, minimal gain, though. Second and six, here's Dawson out of the gun. Going to give Smallwood once again. Big hole. He's finding running room to the 45, carrying a bunch of Warriors all the way past the midfield stripe down to the 49. Oh, it's holding on tightly there was Jaleel Davis. Yeah, and this is kind of what you get a, you get worried about if you're if you're a Westwood fan is that are they going to be able to just to run the ball and run this clock out? Uh, they haven't utilized Smallwood much in the game, so he's fresh. His legs are good, and uh, your defense is maybe a little tired and can't quite get the push or or the right tackling mechanics to bring him down as easy as they were earlier on in this game. Out of the huddle here is the handoff. Another big play by Brown. And just as I say that, they bring him down in the backfield. So obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just a just a roller coaster of emotions here in the your, broadcast booth. Your, your phone's ringing, Steve. It's Coach Wood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> One yard loss, and it is second and eleven. I tell you, Brown. These these guys, the defense is tired, no doubt about it. They've been on the field most of the third quarter. Well, now we're into the fourth. But, man, that front, geez, at least. Yeah, Game balls for those good. guys. Here's Dawson out of the gun. Smallwood up the middle. Breaks a tackle. Kind of slides off there and gets to the outside. He'll be spotted at the 46 is Smallwood. Give the stop to Cooper. And here comes third down and seven. Important play. Here's a big one. You got to just assume a a run to Smallwood up the middle to let the clock run or play action. Yeah, they could. But yeah. I would I would assume that it's either going to be a run from Dawson or, or Smallwood. Here's a third down and seven play from the Westwood 46. Mangozi in motion across, going left to right. Out of the shotgun. Here is Dawson looking, flushed out of the pocket. He's been dangerous on the run, trying to get to the sideline, running to the stick. They get him out of bounds just a little early. Needed to get to the 39, he gets to the 41. Yeah, and that's the difference between a college and a high school game is you've only got chains on one side of the sideline, on one side of the field. So he doesn't know exactly where he's got to get to and runs out of bounds just short. And that was Hawkins. Hawkins just a ball hog tonight all the way across the field. And it's fourth and two from the 41. He's got to get to the 39 for the first down. Nine minutes remaining. Dawson looking over to the sideline. Drew Sanders with the play call. Two receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side. Smallwood is in the backfield, standing to the left of Dawson. Here's Mangozi, the motion man across, waiting for the snap. Dawson, Smallwood takes it. He gets the first down, breaks a tackle, and he'll be down at the 35. Oh, man. Big play. Yeah, and you just had uh, you had Connor Cooper coming in there on a blitz, and he just, he just kind of whiffed on the tackle there. A good move by uh, Smallwood. Who, who kind of gave him a little shimmy to make him die the wrong way to pick up the extra three, four yards there. Um, good play call, um, but Smallwood is, uh, he's shifty in the, he's shifty and strong. Everything you want in a running back. Here's Vandegrift driving into the darkness. Out of the shotgun, gonna give it to Smallwood. Right up the gut, follows the center, runs into Ochoa and Brown. He's dropped there after a three yard gain. But yeah, that darkness there. I don't know if they're gonna get that ball up in the air. Of course, you really don't need to right now. You're going to try to chew up the clock. Smallwood is gouging the defense for four or five yards at a time. Right here, you know, you're at a second and seven. All it's going to take is uh, a, a good penetration from, from Harris and, and a tackle for a loss right here, which we've seen, you know, play after play from this defense. Uh, put them back in a third and ten kind of situation and, and, and see if you can pull up a stop here. Ball on the right side. Hash mark for a second down and seven play from the 32. Smallwood. Follows the lineman as he runs right and picks up about three more. It's going to bring up third down and three for the Vandy offense. Timeout situation, two for Vandy, two for Westwood. 14 to six ball game. Here's the set, so it's actually third down. Yeah, third down and three. Splitting two receivers out to the far side, one here to the near side. You got to think they're going to try a big hitting play here at some point. Yeah, I mean, you'd think so. Here is Dawson as he calls his own number. He's going to be about a yard short. He's trying to make the cut as he ran left and slipped just a tad bit. 
Turf Monster got him. So we're coming up Fourth here. and one. Fourth and one, another big one. And I mean, you know, first down after first down that this Vandergrift offense is getting, but the defense is, the Westwood defense is bringing up fourth down after fourth down. They're just fourth and very short and fourth and manageable, so it's hard to, hard to get a stop on them. Hard to stop. Two big guys in. Here's the fourth down and one play as Mangosi goes in motion. Turns, gives Smallwood. Gets the yard, breaks a tackle to the 20, down to the 19, and that's a Vandy first down. They just keep converting those fourth and shorts. Yeah, but it's tough, and they're going. This is the kind of drive that really both teams have kind of been looking for all night that neither have got, um, but this is kind of just the long, drawn-out, ground-and-pound kind of drive that we kind of expected from this Vandergriff team all night, uh, but they haven't really been able to do it until now whenever the defense of Westwood has been worn out because I would say that the, the defense of Westwood has, has won this side of the ball tonight. Ball at the 19, here's the handoff. Smallwood, he breaks a tackle, breaks into the open field, gets to the 10, he's dropped down there. Oh, oh we're ball going the other the direction. Coming back the other way, here he comes. It's Demetrius Jones as the hit was made by Cooper. Jones has it. Get all the way to the end zone. 88 yards, touchdown Westwood. Oh my God! Are you kidding me? What a play, he just he just sees the ball and just rips it out of Smallwood's hands and says, nope, thank you, I'll take that, we're going the other Holy direction. Holy smoke, Cooper made the hit, Jones picks his pocket. And goes all <laughs> and the way goes down. All the way. Number Holy 11. Holy moly. Dance your dance and talk your smack, big boy, because that's a big play. Now your offense has to convert the two-point conversion here to tie this ball game up with five, just uh, just under six minutes to go. Wow. 79 yards. Got my numbers wrong. 79 yards. Demetrius Jones. Picking pockets. Va Vandergriff's in shock. I think the Westwood crowd is too. Well, I think everybody was everybody. just kind of getting ready to, to call that play down. And and all of a sudden, Demetrius Jones, not giving up on the play, just takes the ball and takes it off the other direction. 14 to 12. That missed extra point looming in right now. Yeah, well, a timeout called by Coach Wood to, to make sure we get the, the right play in on this two-point conversion. Um, and it's been the defense tonight. It's that's ex You're exactly right. Uh, second turnover, obviously two two interceptions by R.J. Martinez. Uh, that's offset by an interception by Nathan Potter, and then you have Demetrius Jones right there with the, I guess the stripping, scooping score, the, yeah. the stealing score. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't really know what to call it. Uh, Strip and go something. Incredible is what we'll call it, and uh, so now the essentially the biggest play of the game right here. Warriors got a two-point conversion to tie this ball game up. Yeah, th th this is taking an awful long time here. I don't, uh, and they keep switching the football out. What worries me here is we, we saw Martinez coming off of a timeout earlier, had trouble with the football. As, as we said, the rain has subsided, but now we're into, this is just drizzle. This is spitting around here is what it's doing. Here's Westwood quickly back out. Those hamburgers are coming. Two-point conversion coming right here. It's a big one. Here's Martinez. They blow the whistle. RJ stands out of the gun. Motion man across is Anderson. Takes the handoff. He is dropped. Just, a, just blown up. Yep. And JJ Parker again. And that's going to be one of those where I think that uh, RJ Martinez has got to pull that ball out and keep it. He was there was nobody on this side of the field for him. Just not not quite the uh, not quite the play call I think that Coach Wood was looking for. Um, but still 5:50 to go. Yeah. Um, and you're about to kick it back off. See if your defense can get one more stop, and now a field goal will win it. Yeah, the bad thing is your defense isn't getting a lot of rest. No. Because it's just happening so fast. 14 to 12, 549 to go. Photography by Jenny Ray, a small town business in the big city. Jenny opened her first studio 14 years ago. Has offered clients an exceptional service for many years. Family portraits, school sports, senior portraits. That's her special specialty. She loves supporting the Westwood community. Her studio's right there in the Westwood neighborhood. Don't hesitate to call her. Your game day images are uploaded within 48 hours. Check back often. JennyRay.com, official photographer, official sponsor of Westwood Athletics. In a doozy here tonight at the reservation. Yep, and you know that uh, 
Cactus Jack would love for his offense to drive the ball down and give him one more chance at a redeeming uh, game-winning kick here. Heartbreak after the McNeil game. He says, I didn't win King, but let me kick a game winner. Let Here's me. the kick. Fair catch called for and made right there at the 34. This time underneath it, it's Carson Sort. So Vandy's done a really nice job of fielding those short kicks like that with those guys coming at him. Yeah, and, and, and if you're Brad Pugh right now, you just got to be looking at your defense and saying, one more, boys. Dig in and just give it all you've got for four more downs. Get one more stop. Put the ball back in the hands of the offense and let them do their thing. But like you said, there's not a whole lot of rest that's been going on with this team. So with this defense, let's see if they can, if they have what it takes to get one more. Going left to right, here's Dawson, hands off Smallwood, breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage, dives forward for a three-yard gain. Dropped by Ochoa and Brown. Those two have been converging on several tackles tonight. Timeout situation, Westwood with one, Vandy with two. Want to talk about being able to shock the state of Texas tonight. It could happen right here. Oh, yeah. All the way out to the 38-yard line. Three-yard gain, second down and seven. Vandy in the huddle. They're going to try to drag the timeout here. Yeah, well, that's exactly what they want to do. So if you're Coach Woods, you got to start thinking, do I hold on to this timeout? Do I do I call it early? Um, it's, it's, it's a very tough situation. So we'll see. We'll see what's going through his head. From the 38, here's Jones coming on a blitz. The handoff, Smallwood runs right into the pack. And Smallwood for two yards to the 41. And it's a third down coming up. Have to think, Stephen, at some point, you think they're going to try something to, to Merrifield or to, or to Mongozi? I, I would think probably right here because the way they've been going for it on fourth down and the way that their defense has kind of stifled the, the Westwood offense, you'd think that maybe right here on third down you do a play action. You see mm -hmm. if you can get some linebackers and some, uh, some DBs to bite and see if you can get your, your, your two stud wide receivers open. And they're both on the far side. Here's Dawson on the handoff. Smallwood, he's dropped after a two-yard gain. Fourth and two coming up. Holy smoke. Tell you what, what's this Westwood with these nail biters? I mean, geez. Third week in a row, and the punting team is coming out. You got to be you got to be on fake alert here. Yeah. You got to be on fake alert. And this right here is just an absolute testament to what this defense has been able to do today. Yeah. There's nobody out there yep. on the far side. There Now, so now there goes uh, Demetrius Jones. Jones. Jasinski will punt it away as Jing stands back at the 22. Oh! Fair catch called for and made there. At the 10, the ball on the carpet. Vandy has it. You have got to let that one go, even if you get pinned back deep. It's dark back there. Vandy picks it up. Oh, heartbreak. Wait a minute, Westwood's acting like they have it. But I think the call's Vandy ball. I think Westwood won in the scrum there, but I think Vandy was the first one to get down and recover it. There's a flag after the play. Oh, and that's going to be just, that's even worse. And there's not even a Vandegrift player on the field. Oh, my goodness. You know, Stephen, before they got ready to punt it, I was going to say, you're punting into the dark. The ball's wet. Oh, man. And then you get to, you're going to march off 15 more yards. It's going to be first and goal from the 10-yard line for Vandergrift. And it's just so unfortunate because your defense does exactly what it needs to do. Yeah, they, they do. They've earned the respect from Coach Sanders that he doesn't even want to go for it on fourth down there. He's been going for it on fourth down all night. And he punts it away. Almost get the block there. And it just what I've been saying all night, every single little bounce of the ball seems to be going with the Vipers. And that's what's just so unfortunate because this Westwood team has played their hearts out yep. and has given everything that they had, especially on the defensive end here. And now they have to sit here and watch this referee walk off 15 more yards. All the way down to the 13-yard line. First down for Vandy. Well, you know what you do now. You give it to number 15. It's going to be a whole lot of small wood right here. Yep. It's just, it's just tough for these kids today for that to happen just now. 
Here's the motion man across. First down play, Smallwood direct snap, directing traffic as he runs left. He's run out of bounds by Vicente Ochoa. First and goal, or second and goal coming up. And I think that play right there just kind of shows you what kind of season that Vanderbilt is having. You know, no, jumping jumping district, districts, no one expects them to go start 7-0 and, and and beat the kind of teams that they beat in the way that they beat them. So, you know, they're on the ropes there, and they just get a ball to bounce your way. Whenever you've got balls bouncing your way, they stay bouncing your way. Second and five from the eight. Here's Smallwood as he plunges inside the five all the way down to the two-yard line. Oh, man, what a way for this to end. Gosh, dog it. And if Vandergriff end up, ends up punching this ball in the end zone and going up 21-12, that final score, if that does remain to be the final score, will not be in any indication of what this game was like. No, absolutely not. First down and goal for Vandy. They'll work from the two-yard line. Clock is approaching three minutes. One timeout for Westwood, two timeouts for Vandy. Here's Vandy up to the line. They line up under center. Now Dawson shifts out. Here's Smallwood, direct snap. Wildcat coming, penalty marker on the play. Delay a game. Yep. Oh, they're going to give him the timeout. Boy, and you think about all kind of different scenarios there. You run that direct snap with a wet football, maybe you get another scoop and score. But Maybe. That's asking for a lot. Hey, we got to thank uh, Nasal and Sinus Center of Austin, 12-309 or North Mopac, and their location over in Lakeway, especially with the weather we've had. Our summers here are unbearably hot, and now we've had rain for the last about 50 years, it seems like, around here. It'll play havoc with your sinus issues, your allergy issues. They offer medical and surgical solutions for that nasal congestion. It is Nasal and Sinus Center of Austin at 13209 North Mopac, and of course, the location in Lakeway. We also have to thank Torchy's Tacos, the favorite Westwood location right there at 11521 Ranch Road 620 at Anderson Mill in 620, a homegrown Texas restaurant now located in 17 cities across the United States. 11521 Ranch Road 620 at Anderson Mill in 620, Torchy's Tacos, another great supporter of Warrior football. All of those sponsors, information available at warriorsports.org. First and goal from the two. Here's Vandegrift. A lot of big guys in the backfield. Here's Dawson lining up under center. Surges forward. And waiting for the signal. There it is. Touchdown, Vandy. Boy, second touchdown of the night for Dawson. But just a, such a quick turn of events, really, for this Westwood team. I mean, you're, you're so hyped up. You just get them to punt, and then you muff the punt, and you just really, really felt the air just kind of come out of this stadium after, yep. after that call was made. Here's Barney. Good snap out of the hole there of Timmy Hanna, and it's up and good. 241 remaining, 21 to 12. And what you have to, what I think about, and of course, as we said, still three games to go. You still got Leander, you still got Stony Point, and you still got Cedar Ridge. You have plays like that, game's not over. Plays like that are not only the ones that can take the air out of your sails, obviously in this situation, but you hope it's not something that, that just destroys the season right yeah and that's one thing you got it they're gonna this team needs to 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 rally around uh what was it was it robbie was yeah, back there yeah robbie jing back there and they got to rally around him and say you know what man that's that's that stinks that happened but don't let it get to you and we're still 241 in this game nate anderson's an electric runner he might be able to take one back here mm -hmm. only i mean you're down nine so it's obviously two possession yep game here but um uh, Really, this team's got to be very proud of what they've been able to accomplish tonight. Uh, essentially, holding Vandergrift to 14 meaningful points. Yeah. I mean, the, the, that last touchdown. Top 20 team in right, the state. Right, in the state to, I mean, it's 21 on the scoreboard, but 21 with two minutes to go, you get the ball first and first and 10 from the 11-yard line. Like, that's not a very meaningful touchdown with 
the time remaining. So this now, defense has to be very proud of the way they played tonight. Of course, now is where we go back to the uh, the couple of field goal attempts that we talked about. Possibly, maybe at one point could have done that. But right, right, right. Again, tough conditions to be kicking in tonight. So here's the kickoff coming. Going to kick it deep. Anderson's going to drive back to the two. You know he's bringing it out. Here we go at the 15. Running left, driven out of bounds there down. Leading the charge is Tyler Mongozi. And it'll be first down at the 16-yard line for the Westwood offense with 2.35 to go in a 21-12 ball game. And everybody else, don't, don't be down on Robbie Jing because one, one thing we got to think about, he's a sophomore. There, this is a sour memory it's going to be, but by the time he's done here, there will be much more positive ones. Absolutely. Plenty more. Than without, without question. There's already so much uh, on the high side for him that, you know, young young mind wants to make a big play here oh, yeah. in this big game and oh, just yeah. kind of maybe overthinks a little bit. Can't be too worried about that. There's going to be m much more to come from him that's on the, on the plus side rather than the negative. Delay of game will be the call there as they were lined up and way out on the far side. Oliver Yu was hollering at RJ. He's like, man, look at the clock. Snap this thing. Third one tonight, I believe, yep. delay of game. Yep. Got to clean that up. And that's, yeah, that's one of those things that this big, big picture for me right now is, and it's nothing against this Vandergriff team. I honestly don't necessarily know if this is the team that can make that late run. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, they've been in very close battles with some with some good teams, but whenever you're going to get up against Lake Travis and, and Westlake and those guys, you got to be on a different level. First and 15, Martinez is able to lay this one out. That's a late hit over there. That's uncalled more. for right there. Hegde, Hegde was five yards out of bounds, and he gets drilled by Drew Nelson. And the hit was a little high. Yeah, that. he's lucky that was on that sideline. Oh, yeah. He'd uh, he, he'd have gotten a stone cold stunner if it had happened over here on the. There would have been Westwood a lot of side. a lot of orange jerseys that had something to say about that had they been on the near sideline here. Yeah, way out of bounds, hit him high. Well, that'll help move the ball up. So uh, let's see if we can make some magic happen here, Warriors. <laughs> I'll tell you, hey, hey, they're good at onside kicks. That's that's what I'm saying. Get a big one with you know two minutes left. Trips to the near side, two to the far side, going right to left. Empty backfield for Martinez. He stands out of the gun. Ball on the carpet. Just falls on top of that one. Takes a hit at the end of it. But that one's just a bad snap from the get-go. And you'll give back the 15 extra yards you got on the late hit, except for this time it's second down instead of first. Yep. You said it. You said it, my man. Second down, Yep. And that's just kind of kind of been the, the Achilles heel all season, really, I will say, is that kind of in these big pressure moments, there's just kind of been com uh, c confusion and communication errors between this team. Here's a second down and 20 play. Trips to the near side. Here is Martinez just swarmed. Untouched. Through the line was Everin Smith. And RJ a little slow to get up. Hey, Steven, Whataburger scoreboard. First we quarter have, score. We have people playing. Yeah, Round Rock leads Stony Point 6 to nothing. That's a huge game in this district. One of the biggest games in the state. Hutto and Cedar Park tied at 7. That's going to be a good one there. <laughs> that, C that Cedar Park game right here available on the KMAC Sports Vite Media Broadcast Network. A big thanks to Mitchell Padgett back at the KMAC Broadcast Studios. He's a, had an early duty tonight for this little shindig. Third down and 22 from their own 26. Trips to the near side in a triangle. Here's RJ's pass complete. Hegde hauls it in. A little high on the hit there. Is this one at the 40, 43? Heck of a catch, yeah. Heck of a catch there from, from Mohan. Defender came in a little high there. Yeah, you'd think. Here we go with the fourth down and. Fourth and what, four? Five? Five, yeah. Here's the offense. Trips to the near side. Two receivers splitting out to the far side. Empty backfield here for Martinez. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Look out, Owsley. Give him some protection. Owsley wants to win his route. Here's RJ looking. He's going to throw the deep ball. This one into a crowd. Picked off. Drew Nelson. Picked off at the 17. Turns up field at the 30. And he will be dropped there. Drew Nelson picks the pocket. And that will probably do it right there. I think I might have gone for the first down. Yeah. 
Well, they were going for the first down, but <laughs> they, were, they were going for it all right there, and just kind of a, just an ill-advised throw. I mean, he's throwing to the speedster Anderson there up the middle, but he was he was covered well by the by the cornerback as well as with safety help over the top. Just kind of overshot him, and it was just kind of. Uh, it was uh, Drew Nelson, yeah, that's what you said, uh, just kind of playing center field there, just kind of tracking yep. the ball and goes and makes a catch. So we'll see a, a couple a couple of kneel downs here from, from Drew Dawson. And um, Easy, easy. Just a really. Like, Hi, how's your mom doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really just an unfortunate way for this game oh, to end. Man, you got to be sick for the Westwood team. Yeah, you really do because they've, they've played – so well tonight on the defensive side of the ball and, and very well um, on the offensive side of the ball. A couple of hiccups here and there on the offensive side of the ball. Um, but really just all around a fantastic game from the boys in orange, but just a few things don't bounce your way. You miss a kick. You, you, you don't convert on a couple of fourth downs. And then uh, obviously the, the muffed punt there at the end. But you got to give it up to them tonight, Rodney. They've done. Yeah. They they have they have looked and they've compete. They've competed with a top a top twenty team in the state, and they and they looked like. Um, yep. They looked like one tonight. If they had played like this all season, mm -hmm. who knows where they'd be? Yeah. Uh, you you wouldn't have lost to McNeil. You wouldn't have lost to Round Rock. And if this team plays like this the rest of the way, they sure as hell shouldn't lose to Leander. <laughs> Or Stony Point. Uh, I completely agree. And oh, well, actually, or Cedar Ridge, honestly. Right, yeah. That, that that was a phenomenal effort by these guys. And that's one of those where you could tell in, in, in all these handshakes going down center field here, uh, down the down the 50-yard line, that this, this Vandergriff team may have may have come in here thinking they were going to whoop up on these Warriors. And they you could tell with all these handshakes, they've, they've got a newfound respect yeah. for these boys in orange here because they, they took it to them all night and they battled them to the very end. And you get like, a lot of handshakes and, and slaps on the shoulder. Right. And, and one of the, and like I said earlier, this, this nine point deficit, uh, this game was not a nine point game. No. This game was a two no. point game. Uh, and just that, that real late score, um, you know, I mean, what, what are you going to do if you're Vanderbilt? Yeah. You're just not going to score and, there. And you know, you you look at this. <laughs> you you look at this. I mean, these teams that we're talking about at the top of the heap right now, that they are senior laden teams and, and juniors. This Westwood team is it's got so oh, many sophomores. So and, much to look uh, forward to. And I mean, we're in the future for yeah. this Westwood team. I completely agree. I heard an interview this weekend or this week uh, where they were talking to Coach Drew Sanders, and they talked about well, the, the good thing is, you know, you've. You've gotten through Hendrickson. You've gotten through, you know, li listing off everybody that they've gone through. Coach Sanders said, well, Anthony Wood and Westwood, they're going to be tough. They were. 21-12 to 12 the final here tonight. As the men in orange fall on homecoming, they may not have won the game, but this was one heck of a homecoming tonight. Yeah, they want some respect is what they want. I'm, I'm Absolutely. Here mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you right there. That, uh, you look at this little team right here. They're on the short end of the scoreboard right now, but, boy, I, I bet you next week you get a very inspired performance as they get ready to take on Leander. And that's that's going to be a tough that's going to be a tough shot right there. Leander's got got a couple of athletes that can that can cause you headaches, but we'll we'll have to see how all that shakes out. But man, what what a ball game! Th this one right here, it was worth getting here early. It was. It was. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, scram scramble the fighters early and make sure everyone gets out here. We get all set up. Everybody out here gets all set up, and uh, this, I mean, just just an unbelievable effort all yeah. the way around from this from from this Westwood Warriors team. I mean, it helps you've got the you. I mean, obviously helps you have the bye week before, but there there was obviously um, the work was put in during practice this week. They they came out here and they showed a very 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 good Vandergriff team. Now now eight and zero after tonight. Yeah. Uh, top 20 team in the state, maybe moving up after this week. Um, that you know, they aren't just going to roll well, over everyone in this yeah. district. This is a tough district. You got to earn every single win. And and you look at you look at Vandy there. I mean, when it's your season, right. uh, I mean, you win those kind of games. You, you you win those ugly games. But but quickly back to Westwood. I mean, just the last three games: Round Rock, McNeil, and this one. I mean, you, you talk about. It's a situation where they say often in life you have to get through a couple of headaches and you have to get through a couple of roadblocks and, and, and stalemates or whatever you want to call it to get to the ultimate goal. These guys just went to, through three very tough ones right there. But um, 
as as Coach Wood has said many times, sun's coming out tomorrow. Yeah, well, and it's one of those. I think. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe not here. Yeah. We haven't seen the yeah. sun in forever. Yeah. But what what you have to what what like going back to what you said earlier, with this team being young, going through those three games like that and coming up short teaches you so much yeah. as as a as a freshman, as a sophomore, and even as a junior going into your senior year. You understand that, okay, this is what it takes to win these games. You know, it's like not making a mistake here, not not running my mouth here and getting a personal foul. Yeah. Uh, you know, just making sure you field that punt or, or catch that ball or make that tackle or get that block uh, that in that one key moment. And that's what all of these young kids right now are learning. Yeah. And so whenever they come into these next games, uh, whenever they're juniors and seniors in the next few years, they're going to understand and they're not going to feel the pressure. They've yeah. been there. They've done that. It's oh. as easy. And so there's a lot to look forward to for this Westwood team, especially these final three games where they can really yeah. go out on a high note the of the season yep. and run the table and say, you know what? Yep. It didn't exactly go our way, but we – we fought, we fought through the hard times, and we came back in, and we finished strong, and we finished the way on our own terms the way we wanted to, mm -hmm. and that's what this, these kids have to look forward to. And they sing the fight song out there, and they sing it proudly. Great, great game for Westwood. Our game tonight presented by the Westwood Warrior Football Booster Club. Should we do like a three three hour post game like UT does? <laughs> no, that's, we could. Since we're done so early. I, think. I mean, we just have the Whataburger scoreboard running all night. The, 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 I mean, live look-ins, as they say. Live look-ins. Yeah, there's so much, you know. So much of this game that, that yeah. we could break down, tell you. but I mean, you just got to hand it to these kids. They fought all night. Obviously, uh, you got to say congratulations out here to the yeah, uh, to, to, to the Vipers who have who are they're classy winners. I'll absolutely, tell you that. and they and they and they are moving to eight and zero. Yeah, and I'm never, you know, I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the person that's going to say, oh, cheer for the other team, but. If there is going to be a team that's going to be undefeated that's, oh, yeah. that's going to make a run, you'd like to see someone yeah. in your district and, and go out there. And it'd be their first time. So, it would be, so that, absolutely. that would be great. Yeah, we always we always say, you know, whoever moves on, the four teams, we cheer them and hope that they do well. Hey, thanks, uh, ATX uh, Football, Austin Youth Football League, Fabulous Affairs Catering, Ferguson Bath Kitchen and Lighting Gallery, Flicks Brew House, J.B. Goodwin Real Estate Agent Linda Badur, Nasal and Sinus Center of Austin, Torchy's Tacos, of course, Whataburger. Thanks uh, to our man Jeff Loker. He came in and uh, talked some good Whataburger, said he, he'd never been interviewed before. He did a darn fine job. Uh, they need to put him on some Whataburger commercials on TV. Uh, Jenny Ray Photography and Ed Lundry, real estate agent, uh, all of their support for Westwood football. Again, the final score in an instant classic. Instant, absolutely. <laughs> could have could have gone either way. Ah, instant classic. 21 to 12, Westwood Falls to the unbeaten Vandegrift Vipers for the Warriors. It's on the road to AC Bible Stadium next week over in Leander ISD to take on the Leander Lions. No scores to give you, nobody else. They're just starting. We're done. We're going to pack up and head out the other way. Got to give thanks back at the KMAC Broadcast Studios. Our man Mitchell Paget for jumping on early as the rain begins to pour. It's coming down now, that is for sure. We may take our time getting out of here. Uh, big thanks to KMAC Sports uh, President Chuck Lakata. Man over here on the other side of the glass, director of programming, Merle Bertrand over here. He had the uh, broadcast for Vandy. He looked over at me one time, and he was just as shocked as we were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, Suda Vincat, Tim Cox, along with Christina Weber, KMAC Sports. Dr. Sankow twisting and tweaking the dials back there, making sure the homecoming festivities doing the way they were. And, of course, my man Steve here calling plays, doing color. Glad you're back, man. I'm so, so happy to be here, man. I love it. I love putting the headset on, getting back in here, hanging out with you and Sang for a few hours. Got to get get a little early sneak peek on Friday to get to hang out with you guys. So yeah. that was always a good time. Absolutely. Again, the final 21 to 12 as we look over at Merle. 21 to 12, Westwood win or Westwood Falls. Yeah. Channeling what I thought. Really, was about really to wanted to say it the other way. <laughs> Westwood Falls. Uh, hey, Warrior Nation, be proud of your Warriors. Give them a hug. Give them a lot of love. They played one hell of a football game tonight. Until next week on the road at AC Bible Stadium, if you're out and about this weekend, be safe. Weather's going to be bad in your travels. If you're heading to Coda, watch out. Water's going to be rising. Be very, very careful. On behalf of the WWSN booth here at, yeah, that's right, hashtag Blame Merle right there. That's a Westwood, <laughs> yeah, inside joke there. But uh, be safe on your travels. Have a great weekend. We're back at AC Bible Stadium as the Warriors take on Leander next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Be safe. See you.